pair of schools from the Council Bluffs area. It is St. Albert. It is Lewis Central. It is a state-ranked battle on the hottest night of the year, Brian Bertini. Yeah, and, and rightfully so. I mean, you know, it's hot, but as we mentioned, Trevor, 98, 99, you know, it's it's just a little couple numbers. But these yeah. teams really want to square off. This is a great rivalry. And probably two of the premier baseball squads in southwest Iowa you know, in Class 1A and Class 4A right now, squaring off tonight in a conference game, no less. Yeah, so this one's got ramifications. You remember last year, St. Albert ran through the Hawkeye 10. was pretty impressive. That started with a win over Lewis Central, I believe, either first or second night of the season. Yeah, I, I shortened schedule last year due to COVID. This year, a full-blown a full blown schedule, you know, conference games and non-conference as well. St. Albert off to a good start, 8-3 and three in the conference, 13-5 and five overall. They had a couple hiccups early. Yep. I think part of it was because some of their guys were involved in other sports. They were doing really well, uh, yeah. a.k.a. Jeff Miller and some of those guys doing state some soccer tennis. qualified yep. for state. So you had that going on. Uh, Lewis Central got hot right out of the box, didn't they? Yeah, they had a big win over Urbandale. I believe it was going back to last week. They played a, a kind of a two-game series with Urbandale and then Johnson. Both teams were ranked. They beat Urbandale, lost to Johnston. Earlier this week, they suffered a loss to Kemper Catholic. That's where their lone blemish is in the Hawkeye 10. So they come in. They're 8-1 and one of the Hawkeye 10. St. Albert 8-3. and three. Uh, So, Brian, this is a game that really could move the needle. It is. And as you mentioned, they split with Kemper. They won 14-3 in game one on Monday and then or Tuesday and then lost 5-4. to four. So, they only, you know, they lost by one there. Uh, St. Albert's kind of on a little bit of a, a win streak right now. They've won six in a row, Trevor. Swept Red Oak on Monday in a doubleheader, 8-4, 11-1. Beat Atlantic impressively, 12-1. Oh, they can do better than that. They put up a football score against Fremont Mills last night, winning 19 nothing. So there, this is an offense that's got some things clicking right now. Yeah, this has been one I've been looking forward to all week. The pitching battle should be fun. Is Luke Hubbard on the hill for St. Albert Hubbard this year? 20 and two-third innings, a 1.35 ERA, 3-1 and one record, 14 strikeouts, 7 walks. Opponents hitting 144 against him, but the guy going against him tonight's on the rubber. Casey Clare of Lewis Central through 11 innings, hasn't given up an earned run, has struck out 19, only walked once. Well, I think that's kind of the hidden stat there, and opponents hitting 211 against him. Well, it is. I mean, you know, again, you might look at this. If this is a non-conference game, you're probably seeing these guys, you know, kind of piecemeal their pitching stat. This is a conference game. And if, if, Lu if St. Albert wants to kind of get back in this and get within one, they want to win this game tonight. Hubbard did throw on Monday night against Red Oak. I believe it was 47 pitches. So he does have some pitches to his name this week. But he's going to be on the hill for St. Albert's. Uh, they're going to lead things off. Colton Brennan, Isaac Sherrill, Cy Patterson, Brendan Monahan, Jackson Lennon, Brett Klussman, Carter White, Jeff Miller, and Dan McGrath. Lewis Central is going to lead things off with Jonah Pomeranke, J.C. Dermody, Britton Bond, Aaron Harrington, Casey Clare, Kale Malskett, Luke Meyer, Peyton Fort, and Drew Naylor. It's going to be a fun one, Brian. Yeah, and, and this is a schedule. You know, this year, Trevor, a lot of times teams schedule lots of games to figuring, hey, we're going to have some rainouts. That hasn't been the case. So all these non-conference games that are kind of interwoven in your schedule, they're on the schedule. If you look at St. Albert, they're going to play Shenandoah tomorrow night and then a doubleheader, a big one at Creston. Look at, look at uh, Lewis Central. T Saturday they're going to go against Waukee and Bishop Heelan in the Battle of the Bluffs game. And they've got a big doubleheader with Clarenda coming yep. up here. And Clarenda's showing that they can play with people. I know when St. Albert put together their schedule at the start of the year when I talked to their coach, Duncan Patterson, I think they had 33, 34 games on the schedule. I mean, as many as they will be allowed, they will. Well, and they might get them all in this year. Yeah, the way the weather has been, that's definitely a possibility. Lineups being introduced right now. This is going to be a fun one here tonight. We hope you're enjoying this, sitting in the air conditioning. And either listening on KMA 960 or listening and watching on the KMA video stream. We've got that going tonight. Huge thanks to Levi's son for helping us out. It's going to be a doozy. St. Albert, Lewis Central Baseball coming on our way here in a few minutes on KMA 960. 960. Seeing is believing. That's what you'll hear from customers that choose Barrett Auto Center of Glenwood time and time again. Barrett customers come in for vehicles and service work, but they come back for conversation and honest advice. They want one of the largest pre-owned and fully serviced inventories in KMA land, and they return when they've gone elsewhere and it just isn't the same. See and believe for yourself how little differences add up to a better car buying experience. Come back to Barrett's and Barrett's Auto Center.com. 
Bedford Drug offers more than just your prescriptions. They are now providing immunizations, including flu, pneumonia, and shingles vaccinations. Plus, they offer prescription synchronization for your convenience. Stop in and visit with pharmacist Mike Schweitzer for more information. See their expanded gift selection, too. Convenience, competitive prices, and people willing to help. Just a few reasons that Bedford Drug is the pharmacy with more for you. Get professional and experienced advice on the spot. Bedford Drug on Main Street in Bedford. For over 25 years, Chad Mobility has provided you the latest technology, competitive prices, and a nationwide high-speed network. Though important, for a whole lot more. We serve your hometown communities, sponsor your local chambers and events. It's our goal to work hard while giving back to those who graciously support us. At Chat Mobility, our interests are much deeper than providing great service. We're just committed to serving you. To learn more, see us at chatmobility.com today. This is Kane with Gowing Plumbing. Gowing Plumbing is the name to remember for 24-hour service. That includes after hours and weekends because that is when problems usually occur. We're located in Shenandoah, but we also serve the surrounding communities. That's the way it's been done for more than 70 years. And we work on boiler heat. So call fully licensed Gowing Plumbing any time of day or night, 246-1803 or after hours at 712-310-9248. Well, it is time to play some Hawkeye 10 Conference Baseball here tonight in Council Bluff, St. Albert, Lewis Central set to go at it. And a pivotal Hawkeye 10 battle. St. Albert ranked number six in class 1A. Lewis Central comes in ranked number nine in class 4A. Brian Bertini, what are you going to keep an eye on tonight? Well, I think as any game, when you get two quality squads here, pitching is going to be key. Throw a lot of strikes, right? You know, trust your defense, Trevor. Avoid big innings. And I think, you know, the other thing is make the plays that you have to make. Make all the routine plays. Don't allow these teams, because these are the kind of teams that can take advantage of your mistake. You know, if you get you let somebody get a two out based on balls or an error, they're good enough to manufacture runs. On the offensive side, when you get chances, hit good pitches, put the ball in play. And like I said, I think we're in for a great ball game against two two excellent ball, ball clubs tonight. So the defense for you for Lewis Central, it's going to be Casey Clare pitching, Britton Bond catching, Aaron Harrington playing first, Peyton Ford at second, Kale Moskett at short, They've got Logan Manns at third, J.C. Dermody in left, Jonah Pomeranke in center, and Drew Naylor in right. Is Casey Clare has been the shutdown man so far this year, Brian? Yeah, I, I work ahead. I mean, you know, I, I watched it last night. Austin and I did the game, Orient Maxburg, East Mills, and Wiley Ray for the Orient Maxburg team. He worked ahead the whole night. He did what I, well, I haven't seen very much of, a complete game in high school baseball this year, all seven innings. And he just worked ahead, and, and he really forced the hitters to hit his pitches. I think both these guys tonight, uh, Casey Clare and, as you mentioned, Luke Hall and Hubbard, they're going to want to get these guys at the plate chasing their pitch. And definitely anytime when you've got the pitch count that comes into effect, you don't want pitchers that are able to, exactly. or hitters that are able to work up pitch counts, spoil well, pitches. And that's, that's huge because every pitch early matters late in the end. You know, if, if your pitcher goes in the fourth and fifth inning, all those extra foul balls and stuff like that do add up, Trevor, as you pointed out. Colton Brennan, the righty, will start things off for St. Albert, hitting 361 on the air, 452 on base, 426 slug. He'll be the first batter face tonight by Casey Clare, and Clare puts that one low and away for a ball. And the other thing is, pitchers got to adjust to the strike zone of the umpires. You know, every umpire's got a little bit different nuances in their strike zone. And where, where, where can you push it? Is he giving you the inside, up, down, low? So the 1-0, chopped in play, roller to third. Long throw, Mans to first, and there in time oh. to Harrington. No, they say you safe, oh, pulling no, off the bat. But not by much. Got him out. They're going to call him out. It was a high hop. The first baseman did a high scoop on it. And now batting number 15. The so Isaac Sherrill, the shortstop, will come up to the plate now. Well, the throw was low, Albert. Trevor, as you mentioned. But what a great save by the first baseman right there. Um, that was Aaron Harrington who start, you know, could have potentially lead off runner for the, for the St. Falcons on. And he snuffed it away. So one gone here in the first. Here's the pitch. That one's outside. And now, I know it's only three pitches in, but Claire kind of putting them outside early on. Again, a lot of the, you'll see the philosophy, see if the St. Albert players crowd the plate, force maybe to take away that inside half. 
Next one to Cheryl. Fouls it back to the fence. He's been raking lately. 492 with 22 RBI. Well, again, RBIs are predicated upon guys ahead of you, you know, either the top or the bottom of the lineup getting on, Trevor, in that number two hole. And that's a great sign if you're Coach Patterson to see your, your number two hitter with a lot of RBIs. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Cheryl. That one <laughs> inside. Just he had a duck, yeah. outside, right? As, uh, is it Henry Doyle or Harry Doyle? Harry Off Doyle. Major League? Harry Doyle, yeah. Two and one the count. I just finally watched that movie a couple months ago there after <laughs> years of being chastised by Ryan Matheny <laughs> and Derek Martin. Now I think I've seen it about five times since. Here's a two one count from Casey Clare to Isaac Sherrill with one gone here in the top of the first. Foul again, back to the fence. Just got a piece of it. It's a two two count. He's been a steady heady. Steady diet of fastballs here a little bit. Let's see if he tries to change speeds a little bit on this pitch. He's got a pretty good count, 2-2. Two, two. So two balls, two strikes, one gone here in the first. Cheryl sends that one to left. It drops fair. It's over he'll the head. Send him around to second, and it'll be a stand-up double with one out for Isaac Sherrill. So the batting average will bolster a little bit. Well, he did a good. He could hit a pitch middle yeah, in, and he pulled two. the ball hard. And the, the ground as hard as it is, Trevor, right now. That just took one of those hard ground hops and bounced over the left fielder to the fence and stand-up double, as you mentioned. St. Albert got something going here in the top of the first. Now, Cy Patterson, who's hitting 545 on the year with 49 RBIs. He is the Reigning Cam A. Land Offensive Player of the Year. Going to play baseball at DMAC. Of course, his father, Duncan, the head coach. Awaits the first pitch. One gone, a runner on second. Here at the top of the first. Claire checks Cheryl at second. Now that one is inside and high. Well, he tried to snap a breaking ball, just left it out. So trying to find that grip a little bit. Of course, as hot as it is, yeah. you know, a little sweat, a little moist. You can't get a good tight grip on it. Trying to find that angle. Working out of the stretch, whether there's runners on or not. So two and one, the, you know, one other count is to Patterson, who fouls that one back. So they send all their batters early on, Brian. They're getting pieces of them. Yeah, they're right on. When you see a ball fouled straight back, that means you're right on the pitch. You're just a little bit, you know, a little bit over, a little bit under it. And, uh, Patterson, as you mentioned, with the 545 average, he's not missing much, Trevor. No, looking for another RBI. He's already got 39 this season. Isaac Sherrill could be number 40. Again, sends it back to the fence, and it's a 1-2 count. Well, and Casey Clare would like to snap off a good breaking ball, but the, the potential is with the two strikes, first base open, if it's a swinging miss, the runner at second is going to advance to third. The batter then can swing and miss on a third strike and advance to first, and, can, you know, it can add more damage. So the 1-2 from Clare to Patterson with Sherrill at second. Clare will check Pat Sherrill a couple times. Now Patterson sends one into center. Back his palm ranky, back his palm ranky, and he Dropped over it. his head, couldn't get it. That'll send Cheryl around, and he gets the throw at the plate. It won't matter because he slides in. And now Patterson slides into third, barely beats the throw from Bond to Mans, but it's an RBI for Cy Patterson. Well, St. Albert's picking up where they left off, Trevor. You know, like I said, they, they scored 12 runs now Tuesday night against five. Atlantic, 19 last night against Fielder Fremont Mills. And here they're on the board early here, and the thing about it is they're taking advantage of some, some opportunities, and uh, they're hitting the ball hard. Brennan Monahan comes up to the plate. He's hitting well. Is also 426. St. Albert is a team hitting 386. <laughs> That's impressive. You will uh, take that any time. So Patterson at third, one gone, tap of the first, one zip St. Albert. That one is the outside part of the zone called strike, and it's an 0-1 count. Well, that's a great problem for Duncan Patterson to have. So if you're a gun guy trying to find a way to work in the lineup, and it's hard when your team average is almost, you know, 390. You're, uh, you're not going to get a lot of chances to kind of slip in the lineup. So the 0-1 to Monahan fouls it along the right field line out of play. Good piece of hitting right there. Took an outside pitch, tried to go to right side. A ground ball is going to score your runner. A, a ball hit deep enough to right field will score the runner on a sack. So... That's good hitting. Now, a little bit more defensive now with the two strike counts. Feels like a big outfield. Here's the 0-2 from Claire to Monahan. That one misses outside, and it's a 1-2 count. Well, yeah, and of course the wind kind of out of the south, southwest, so it's blowing you know, pretty much out to straight left field. So anything hits scoreboard over, which is in the left center, Trevor, I think is going to have a little extra giddy up on it. So the 1-2 from Claire to Monahan. 
Timed up into center. That'll score Patterson. And Brennan Monahan keeps the line moving with an RBI single. Well, everything's been hit pretty hard except that first ground ball to third baseman. Everything else has been hit pretty much on the nose. Again, Trevor, you can just feel the confidence oozing with these St. Albert hitters as they come up and they're just ready to take a pitch and, and uh, drive it. So Jackson Lennon will now come up to the plate. Lennon DHing tonight for Hubbard, the pitcher. He's got Monahan at first. Lennon hitting 379 on the year. Outside, runner goes. The throw is high to short, and getting in safely is Monahan. Well, and here's here's the advantage: when your offense is clicking on all cylinders with with the sticks, you can afford to be pretty aggressive on the bases because you know you're going to get a lot of guys on and a lot of RBIs and. Here they go. So Monahan now at second. A 1-0 to Jackson Lennon from Claire. Claire checks Monahan. Now launches a 1-0. That one's low at inside. It brings it to a 2-0 count. Now this is a dangerous pitch right here for Casey Claire. He can't throw something too much over the middle with Monahan the, the, with the hitter right here. He's got to be. He's got to nip. He's got to pick a little bit on the corners if he can. Casey Claire pitching. Britton Bond catching. Aaron Harrington at first. That one just misses outside. It's a 3-0 count. Peyton Ford at second. Kale Malskid at short. Logan Mans is at third. J.C. Dermody in left. Jonah Pomeranke in center. Drew Naylor in right field. So a 3-0 count. Are you taking here? Are you I, you know what? If he gets his pitch, I think he'll let him swing. We'll see. And they'll take, and it's a 3-1 now. You're on seeing Lennon. more and more of that at all levels now. I know when I was coaching at Glenwood, we, we preached – some of our better hitters, we turned them loose on 3-0 yep. because they were going to get a great pitch. So now it's a 3-1. One. one gone, runners on second. With Brendan Monahan, two zip St. Albert here in the top of the first. Claire with the 3-1. That one is a called strike runner, goes down the line. Bond made the throw, but it's not in time to Manns and stealing third safely is Monahan. And now you've got a chance for a sacrifice. Well, that, you know, a pass ball now, plates yep. another run, uh, an infield, you know, ball bouncing off a glove, as you mentioned, a sack fly. It, yeah, so every base closer puts you one better chance to score this run. So a full count pitch from Casey Clare to Jackson Lennon with the runner on third on its way. It misses outside, and it puts runners on the corners. Good by Jackson Lehman. Not to chase that pitch. He recognized it was down and away, didn't chase it. And St. Albert continues to go through this batting lineup. Now Brett Klossman will step up to the dish. Hitting 289 on the year. He's the Cam he was the Cam A Land Boys Golfer of the Year. Had a strong showing at the Well, and you got some options meet. here, too. You can play small ball here. You can put a bun down, safety squeeze, yep. maybe score run, move around at the same time. You could steal. You've had luck on the bases right now, Trevor. So let's see what... Uh, they run. And of course, Lewis Central going to have some kind of potential play, maybe short throw back to pitcher, or they'll throw behind the runner at third. So I'm sure the coaches from St. Albert kind of preaching some of those same scenarios. So Monahan at third, Lennon at first, one gone. Claire takes a long stare at Lennon at first. Now goes to the first pitch to Klossman. It gets away from a catcher bond. Monahan will stay at third, but Lennon's able to take second. Well, that, yeah, that just took that option off the table right there. So he advances to second, really, with, without, a, without a play. And now a single potentially could play two. Right. Here's Brett Klusman awaiting the 1-0 count. Two zip St. Albert here in the tap of the first. Klusman sends that one to short. Able to glove it is Mouskit. The throw to first is there, but it scores a run. Well, heads up running on both runners. Of course, on contact when the runner at third saw that it wasn't back to the pitcher or the corner, he took off, was going to play. The runner at second broke immediately, really forced Mall's guy to have to make a quick decision. Does he take the short out at third? He elected to go over to first, get the out. But another runner 90 feet away from scoring again, Trevor. And so Lennon at third with two gone. Carter White, the left fielder, comes up. He's hitting 444 on the year. That one misses high. Wouldn't you like to have your seven hitter hitting 444? Oh, yeah, well, and, and again, they've gone. Look what they've done with the top of the lineup here in the top of the first over. They've gotten near the bottom. They're going to roll this over to start the second. 
It's still the top of a first. Here's the next pitch. It misses low and outside for yeah. a ball. This is a dangerous pitch right here because in Casey Clare knows that he, if he throws something middle, as you mentioned, the hottest Carter White is. There's an RBI sitting out there waiting. Already three zips, St. Albert. Not even a half inning in. White sits on that one to so the outside part of his own called strike. Well, and that's it. A 2-0 pitch has to be the pitch you want. If you chase a pitcher's pitch, you might foul it off and hit a you know, weak ground ball or pop up. So good decision by Carter. So the 2-1 sits on that one, and it's a called strike. 2-2 two two uh, to count. a good pitch by Casey Clare. He went right back to that same spot. Forced and see if Case Carter would try to pull it. He didn't. And now we're even at twos. So Claire hadn't given up an earned run in 11 innings, given up a couple already tonight. Here's the 2 2 trying to get out of this inning. It's chopped to third. Long throw from Mans is not in time, and it scores a run. Well, it was that extra little hop. The third baseman playing deep with two outs. That ball just got by the pitcher, Trevor, just enough. And Carter White, with the speed he has, beats it out. So an infield single. And again, Trevor, the St. Albert. Falcons finding ways to score runs in all different scenarios. A long ball, uh, you know, yeah, steals that one, and a you know, infield single. That was a tough play for Manns to make to Harrington. And didn't miss it by much, but now it's the eight hitter Jeff Miller, who just today was named the KMA Land Tennis Player of the Year. Steps up to the plate. Claire makes White think he's yeah, going to throw there, and it's a balk, yeah. He didn't step off. I think I don't think he thought Aaron Harrington was ready for the throw, and right now. Titans a little bit discombobulated, I think. They just got to kind of relax, gain their composure. Hey, it's all the top of the first. Isn't that a great word, discombobulated? It's a lot of syllables. It's, I don't know that I could spell it, but <laughs> it's a great word. It here's, is a great word. Here's the first pitch now on the way to Jeff Miller, who will play third base for the Falcons tonight. He sits on that one. It's in the zone for a strike, 0-1 the count. And again, another RBI out there in the waiting wings, second base. For the Falcons, he'd love to put a five spot up here in the first inning with Coach Patterson. So it's an 0-1. Claire sends that one inside. Miller going to keep it in play. Coming over from right is Drew Naylor, but actually coming back and getting the play from first is Harrington. And that's how the inning ends, but not before St. Albert puts four runs on the board. We go to the bottom of the first for Zip St. Albert here on KMA 960. HawkeyeFord.com is where you'll find a complete selection of pre-owned cars and trucks. It's also where you can estimate your trade-in value and receive a no-hassle quote. Since 1988, Hawkeye Ford has been offering a high level of customer service and a commitment to making the process of buying your vehicle an enjoyable one. They strive to deliver 100% satisfaction every time you visit their location on Highway 34 east of Red Oak or on their 24-7 location, HawkeyeFord.com. Iowa Western Community College has important news for you. If you're a high school senior trying to figure out what your next step in life will be after high school, consider this. Students learning trade-specific skills will get you into the workplace quicker, making a good living and having a lot less college debt. Iowa Western offers one- to two-year programs in nursing, welding, industrial tech, and advanced manufacturing, plus many others. Great skills and great pay in less time. Talk to Iowa Western Community College in Clarinda and Shenandoah and start planning your future now. Well, Lewis Central coming up here well, in the Lewis bottom Central of the first on KMA 960. Trevor Mander, Brian Bertini here with you tonight from Council Bluffs. Also, we're video streaming online, KMALand.com. Brian, couldn't ask for a much better start if you coach Duncan Patterson well, in St. Albert. Again, I, I, I said it a couple of times. They they scored 19 runs against Fremont Hills. They just kind of picked up. It's like they yeah. just got off the bus, grabbed the stick, started hitting Trevor, didn't they? Against the pitcher that came in not – not allowing any earned runs in 11 innings so far this season, so that's, that's not easy to do. But now Lewis Central, they've got some offensive firepower of their own oh, you bet that do. has been clicking. They're going to try to spark things with Jonah Pomeranke, J.C. Dermody, and Britton Bond. If anybody gets on base, Aaron Harrington will join the fun. Defensively for St. Albert, Luke Hubbard on the hill. Tim McGrath catching Cy Patterson at first. Colton Brennan at second. Isaac Sherrill at short. Jeff Miller at third outfield left to right. Carter White, Brennan Monahan and Brett Klusman. Four zip St. Albert as we go to the bottom of the second. And that was all after one out, actually, because yep. the leadoff hitter got out for the Falcons. So Hubbard want to do the same thing here. He wants to get this first out. Pomeranke being 286 on the year. Again, Lewis Central's got to realize this is just the bottom of the first. There's a lot of ball game to go. First pitch is with a ball. The next one's in there for a strike. Brings it to a 1-1. 
Both pitchers tonight and like what they do. If ever they get the ball, they work fast and throw a lot of strikes. I will uh, never complain when a pitcher works fast. And that one and throws a lot of strikes. That too, yep. We'll never and, and complain. As a hitter, you want that too. I mean, you, you like to go up there knowing the guy's going to be around the zone and you're going to be able to get a swing. So here's Palm Ranky with a 1-2 count. He's going to play baseball just down the road at Iowa Western. Six on that one. It's just outside for a ball. Thought about it. Pulled back. So one ball, two strikes. Should be 1-2 from... Hubbard to Pomeranke, and that one hits Pomeranke uh, on the hip. Tried to run a fastball in, just kind of got away from him. Now yeah. batting number three. And Left now up to the plate will come J.C. Dermody. He's had a strong start to the season. And that's what Lewis Central wanted, find a way to get that leadoff hitter on, get something working. And, you know, all you're looking at, you look at the, you got to take away the four. You just want to add a couple yep. runs. I mean, you chip like, away and, and get, a, get a number of your own up there. Kind of like you said, you've still got six innings to, to work through. Here's J.C. Dermody hitting 459 on the season. Ten RBIs, sits on that one high, and it's a 1-0 count. One thing you got to be careful of, though, Dan McGrath's got a really good arm and a quick release behind the play. He's thrown behind runners at, at first, third, and, of course, he can throw down to second. So you've got to be really aware on the, on, the, on the basis of the Titans. Hubbard makes the throw over to Patterson at first, but uh, Pomeranke wasn't going anywhere. Still a 1-0 count to J.C. Dermody. Hits that one right on a line to second in kind of no man's land was Pomeranke after it was fielded uh, at second by Colton Brennan, and it's a double play. Uh, it went like a magnet right into Brennan's glove. Did As you mentioned, the runner was frozen. He, he had to get far enough off. If he drops it, it gets through, he can get advanced. And there's just no way for him to get back. And just like that, quick two outs, and now Hubbard one out away from getting out of this inning. There's Britton Bond up to the plate for the Titans. Yeah, nice little slider to start with right there. Middle in, drifted outside, got a piece of the corner. Bond hitting 395 on the air. First pitch outside for a ball. And sometimes as a pitcher, you work the edge out, see how far the umpire is going to get to that angle. Greg Maddox used to do that pretty well. That guy was pretty good. When he would push that thing out and push that thing out, and it's just like a little lace and... Hitters knew that you were going to have to go about a four inches over outside the plate and protect it. 2-1 the count to Bond. He takes a swing at that one. It pops up, trying to track it down as McGrath, and he does, and that's how the frame ends. So Lewis Central gets a hit but gets caught in a double play. We've played one. It is four zip St. Alberts here on Cam 16. End of one. Health Mark, caring for you and about you. Well, St. Albert's got the 9 1 2 hitters. Coming up here in the top of the second, Trevor Mater, Brian Bertini here with you tonight. Four Zip St. Albert leading Lewis Central in this Hawkeye 10 Conference baseball battle. Uh, it'll be Dan McGrath, Colton Brennan, Isaac Sherrill for sure. Anybody gets on base, Cy Patterson will well, get another at bat. The impressive thing is, Trevor, they've, they've rolled their lineup over, and, and they're going to start. These guys that let off the game in the top of the first are going to get a bat in the second. That tells you how efficient and how productive the St. Albert lineup is here, as you mentioned. Okay, they put four up in the first. Lewis Central had a, had a runner get on with a hit by a pitch in their portion of the first, but unfortunately a double play kind of – Doomed any chances they had in that inning. And now batting, number four, one thing to note, Brian, Dan after McGrath. after Dan McGrath's plate appearance, this is going to be the second time through the order for Casey Clare and company. Well, and if you're wondering, is this out of the ordinary? How about the last four games? They've put up 50 runs. Yeah. 50 runs in four games. So <laughs> this First feels pitch. like normal to these guys, doesn't yeah. it? First pitch to McGrath outside for a ball. One out of the count. 
And Dan McGrath catching tonight for the Falcons, batting in the ninth spot. 1-0, timed up. Drifting foul, trying to chase it down as Bond, and he does. There's one gone. Oh, uh, just kind of almost a sigh of relief right there from the Titans. Right. They, they got him out, you know. They did that to start the game, yes, too. Yes, they did, but now, now here comes the top of the lineup, which kind of got everything rolling here, except this guy. He, Colton Brennan was the first victim and thought it might be a quick inning for Casey Clare, but changed quickly. Let's, he'd love to get on the hit parade, wouldn't he? Absolutely. Again, defensively for Lewis Central, Casey Clare pitching, Britton Bond catching, Aaron Harrington at first. Peyton Ford at second, Kale Moskett at short as that one's on the outside part of the zone for a strike. Logan Mans at third, J.C. Dermody at left, Jonah Pomeranke in center, Drew Naylor in right. 0-1 the count now to Colton Brennan, who was an out back in the first. So the 0-1, it hits him in the back. Uh, he tried to go inside with that breaking ball, just can't get a grip on it. And This time, Colton Brennan finds first base. He'll take it whatever way he can get. And here comes the danger part. Here comes murderer's row, if you will. <laughs> and is it is it harder? This might be kind of a silly question, but when you've got a day like today where it's so humid, it's got to be harder to grip a baseball. Well, it is, and I think you're trying to be so fine because you know the margin for error. With, with the quick hands, any inside pitch, these guys can turn on it and rip it. So your, your margin for error is, is, in, is pretty small. Isaac Sherrill, who singled and scored a run back in the first, sits on the first pitch. It's outside for a ball. And that's why you see him working out in a way low, trying to get him to see if they'll take that outside pitch. You pull an outside pitch, it typically goes to your shortstop or back to your pitcher. So one of the count to Sherrill. Cy Patterson awaits on deck. Sherrill swings, takes a healthy swing at that one, but it's just off, and it's a 1-1 count. That time he took a little off, a little bit of a changeup right there, and looked like a fastball with the rotation spin, a little bit slower, and... Cheryl was going to see if he could put deposit one on the on the outfield. I guess we really can't call it green as much anymore, can no. we? No, it's tan. pretty dry. Yep. <laughs> kind of looks the way my yard looks before this rain. Here's the 1-1. One, one. It's outside for a ball. Yeah, I'm trying a little small ball. Maybe that's a protect. I'm going to put the bat out, block the vision to catch or allow my runner to get down. I think Coach Patterson knows every run here early is huge. If they can keep adding to their 4 nothing lead, they can make this little – this hill a little bit harder to climb for the Titans. So the next pitch coming from Casey Clare to Isaac Sherrill. Pretty good lead at first by Brennan, too. Pitch swung back to the fence, fouling out of play. Good pitch, took the outside pitch, tried to go to right field, which is what you want your second hitter to do, Trevor. Hit behind runners, advance runners. You, you always want that guy to find some way to advance the runner from first to second or possibly third. So you try to work on hitting, hitting behind that runner. So the 2-2 with one gone. Got a runner on first. That's Isaac Sherrill, who was hit by a pitch just moments ago. Claire sends that one, and then that is sent to left. That is back. That is gone. back. That is gone. Who homered? Isaac Sherrill wow. homered a two-run blast. And where did Casey Clare defeat it on lead. the middle inside half? And Sherrill sat on that. And as you mentioned, got it up in the wind and cleared the fence easily. And just like that, a 6 nothing lead for the Falcons here. He is mugged at home plate. And things are going about as well as they could offensively for Coach Duncan Patterson's squad. Wow. And they're hitting good pitches. And that, that time, Casey Clare... Tried to see if he could catch him on the inside half, and Cheryl had none of that, Trevor, did he? He did not. Six zip, now Cy Patterson up to the plate. Again, St. Albert coming on a six-game winning streak, so they've got a lot of confidence right now. They're, like I said, clicking on all cylinders. So Patterson he has got some offensive pop in the bat. Sits on that one. Base is cleared after that two-run shot from Isaac Cheryl. So in four games and an inning in a third, they've got 56 yep. runs. That, do the math. That's pretty good average. Falcons ranked six in class 1A. Eh? That one low and away for a ball. They were a state qualifier last year, and I think you could say they were the eighth seed and probably shouldn't have been the eighth seed. They took took a really good Remsen team down to the – Well, and they started the year, I think, preseason number one. They just didn't yep. have all their pieces ready to go as the, a lot of those guys were playing multiple sports in the spring. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Patterson sends that one to left. And does that have a chance to get gone too? Yeah, it's fine. It oh, is gone. It is fair. That was just out of our view, but Cy Patterson follows suit with a shot. That was a moonshot. There was all, that just got it so high, the wind carried it out. So back to back homers. I guess 
Cy Patterson says, what you can do, Isaac, I can do too. <laughs> so Cy Patterson joins the hashtag who homered. It's seven zip St. Albert here in the second. We're going to walk out from the Lewis Central coach right now. And we'll see Coach Jim Waters will come out. If you're just tuning in, Isaac Sherrill had a two-run blast. And Cy Patterson followed with the homer moments ago, and it's 7-zip. Uh, again, all started with one out. Dan McGrath led off the inning. The number nine hitter popped up, foul. Colton Brennan got hit on a pitch, didn't he? With two strikes, yep. Trevor. He put first base. Sherrill worked to a 2-2 count. Took a pitch on the inside, drove it way over the fence in the left center. And then just now, Cy Patterson says, you know what? I don't feel like running too hard, but I want to touch now all the bases. So I'll hit one over the fence myself. So the LC assistant coach that came out to converse with Claire is going back to the dugout. We're ready to continue. Again, just kind of tell him, focus on hitting your spots. Move it around a little bit. Be aggressive. Hey, like I said, there's still a lot of game to go. Absolutely. I mean, we've still, we're still in the top of the second. One gun. Here's Brendan Monahan. An RBI single earlier. That one is in there for a strike. And I think if you're clear, it's what you want to do. You just want to start throwing strikes. Well, you, you got to just kind of focus. See where the pitch is. Hit your spots. Trust your catcher. Trust your mechanics. Get outs. The 0 1. Chop to first. Harrington is there. He'll step on the bag nonchalantly, and there's two gone. Just like that. I mean, you got a good defense behind you. You know that. You have to put in play, and the guys will make the plays, and there they induce the ground ball, and Harrington cleaned it up nicely, and now two outs. Nine, and the DH, again, and stop the bleeding right here. Go back in and work on your offense. And with Lewis Central's firepower as well, I mean, yeah. they can certainly find themselves back in it. It just takes a couple hits to kind of get, the, get things rolling for them as well. Here's Jackson Lennon. With two gone, nobody on here in the top of the second. Just gets a piece of one, it will roll foul. Brings it to an 0 1 count. Well, they've done it multiple ways, have the Falcons. They've hit some in the infield, they hit batters, they stole some bases, got some hard line drives, and they've also had a couple one land outside the fence. Fair. That always helps. Yeah, it sure helps. So the 0 1 to Jackson Lennon. Can Casey Clare get the start on the hill tonight for the Titans? It's been their ace so far this season. The 0-1 to Lennon, chopped to short on the run, trying to make the throw, and doing it is Malskit to Harrington, and that's how the inning ends, but not before a couple of homers give three more runs to St. Albert. Seven to zip. We go to the bottom of the second here on KMA 960. From large projects to daily tasks, we can help at Miller Building Supply in Shenandoah. This is Josh, and we pride ourselves on quality products, knowledge, and service. We're always available for advice on the projects that take years to design or the issues that need fixed in a hurry. And we offer free estimates on anything and everything you need to complete both. When you have a demand, we offer the supply. Miller Building Supply in Shenandoah. Nutrien Ag Solutions is your leading agricultural retailer of crop inputs and expert solutions. And they're your choice in the region for top-of-the-line products and customer service. When nothing short of the best is your standard, talk with Nutrien Ag Solutions in Westboro, Missouri, Coyne, Percival, and Essex, Iowa for fall application and products. Nutrien Ag Solutions, growing your crops and your bottom line. Welcome back to Council Bluffs here on KMA 960. Trevor Metter, Brian Bertini here with you tonight. Hawkeye 10 Conference Baseball, 7-zip St. Albert. We go to the bottom of the second, Brian. That's not a football score, though, is it, Trevor? It's not. It, it could be, but it's not. It's, it's a really high, efficient and potent St. Albert Falcon offense that's got the seven run. Now, if you're Luke Hubbard right now, your job is to focus, keep that zero where it's at, because you want nothing more than get your team back in the dugout and get back right. in the offense. So coming up for Lewis Central in this frame, it's going to be the 4-5-6, Aaron Harrington, Casey Clare, Kale Malskit. If anybody gets on, you would add Luke Meyer to the mix. Again, Luke Hubbard pitching for St. Albert, puts that one kind of inside part of the zone, called strike. Working down and in. Lefties, though, like balls down and in. They like to hit balls. That's kind of their comfort zone right there. So let's see how 
Hubbard pitches yeah. it, works outside with that the breaking ball. Yeah, that one's time. outside. 1-1 one, one count. Defense sweeper St. Albert, Luke Hubbard pitching. Dan McGrath catching. Cy Patterson is at first. Playing second is Colton Brennan, Isaac Charlotte short, Jeff Miller at third. It's a 1 2 count now after the strike. Okay, he's got him where he wants him now. The thing you want to make sure you do is you don't bite off a curveball that lands in front of the plate, which you know could right. be a swinging miss, and then the ball goes back to backstop. You want to keep it something up, but not hittable here. This is the pitch. Just downside, we've yet to have a strikeout from either pitcher so far. Now, granted, we're only an inning and a half in. But he ran a fastball, a little cut on that, a little tail to see if he could get it to kind of go away from the left-handed hitter. Two balls, two strikes. Check swing, they're going to say he went, and it's... And it throws him with that breaking ball, ball in the three. outside corner. That was a great pitch by Luke now Hubbard right there. It looked like pitcher. to the left he was going to be outside, but he brought it back over the outside half of the plate, and there's your first strikeout, and it's... Uh, Goes to Luke Hubbard, now it's Caught pitcher. looking. Put pitcher. the backwards K in the book, right? Yep. Love doing that. It's pitcher against pitcher now. It's Luke Hubbard pitching to Casey Clare. Seven zip St. Albert here in the bottom of the second. That first one, and well outside for a ball. One out of the count. Again, still the first time the Titans are going through the lineup. St. Albert's already gone through and seen Casey Clare a couple times. Here's the 1-0. Clare just misses on that one. It's 1-1. Okay, now Luke Hubbard's getting a pretty good grip on that breaking ball. You can see if you can get a tight... You got a breeze blowing into you, Trevor, and you can get good tight rotation. You can always snap it off. One misses for a ball. Two and one the count. Again, if you're just tuning in, St. Albert got four on in the first, three in the second moments ago. A couple of homers from Isaac Sherrill and Cy Patterson. That one just outside for a ball. Three and one the count. Three balls, one strike, one gone. Here in the top of the second. That one misses as well. It's a five-pitch walk to put Casey Clare on the base paths. Yeah, just missed it on a couple outside high fastballs. Titans got something working here. And, again, that's all it takes is just one runner gets on yep. and allow another guy to come to play. And here's Kale Mouse get the shortstop up to the dish. Get Lewis Central still working their way through the order for the first time. Titans 12 and 2 overall, 8 and 1 of the Hawkeye 10. That one well outside. McGrath gloves it. It's a 1 0 count. Well, the last base runner, I think Pomerinke got hit on the first pitch. Then he got doubled on the liner, so they got that runner erased quickly. The 1 0. In their first strike, Hubbard battles back, brings it to a 1 1 count. Good arms on the infield for the Falcons. They're really good at turning some double plays, so they're going to look anything up the middle into third, see if they can turn two. Hubbard checks the runner at first. Now he'll throw over to Patterson. Getting back safely is Claire. I think that's, I can't tell from here. Sure, yep, Claire, you know, sometimes you get a courtesy runner, but Claire out there on the base pass. So one ball, one strike, one gone. That's sent to right. It looks like it might get down. It will get down in front of Klossman. They will wave Claire around to third. The throw to third is in time. Did they get him? No, not quite. Nice job by Claire to get underneath it. Yeah, he slid out to the outside. It was a nice throw from the right fielder. A yeah, nice throw from Klossman yeah. to Miller. I, I thought now maybe 12, he kind of hesitated H going around fire. second, did Claire. And, but Klossman set his feet, threw, threw a good dart to third. A close play, then closer than we thought it was going to be. But now Titans got somebody on the corners with just one out. They will bring Luke Meyer up to the plate. He's had some power in the bat this year. Well, they would love nothing to see if they could get an extra base hit here, score one, and get some other runners in scoring position and kind of get their offensive going. Meyer, the DH tonight, hitting 394 on the year, 12 RBIs. Yes, homer twice. That one misses outside. It's a 1 0 count. Hubbard starting with a breaking ball, a little bit too far outside. Runners on first and third. Claire was hit by pitch. Meyer just misses that one. It's a strike. And then just moments ago, Mouskit got on with a single. One and one to Luke Meyer. Hubbard will check the runner at first. Now Rockets the one one. Meyer sends that one back to the fence. And again, Brian just timing a little off on that one, but yep. you got gotta like that. Well, and there's a little bit of shade coming into the batter's box, you know, out by home. So the depth perception just a little, you know, could be playing with you just a little bit as far as picking the spin up on the ball from the pitcher. 
So one ball, two strikes from Luke Hubbard to Luke Meyer. Luke versus Luke. Luke Meyer sends one into shallow center. Drifting back from short is Cheryl. And he gets to it, keeps the runners honest, and there's two gone. Wow, he's got a great arm, does Isaac, and it's you know too risky to try to send now that runner from third baseman, on a tag right there. So that's what Luke Hubbard won. It was an infield pop-up. He got it. Now he's one out away from getting out of this jam here in the bottom of the second. Brings Peyton Ford up, hitting 250 on the air. He's a sophomore. Again, two gone, runners on the corners for Lewis Central, bottom of the second, seven zip St. Albert. Leading this one. Hubbard launches the pitch, it's in there for a strike. You'd be inclined to think maybe you'd send the runner here with two outs, but with McGrath's good arm, if he throws it out, uh, you're, you know, you get right. nothing this inning. I think you, you gotta kinda trust your chances here to get a hit. Here's the 0-1, runner goes, it was a hit and run, slow roller to second, coming over, underhand scoop is there from Brennan to Patterson, that's how the inning ends, so LC strands two, we've played two, seven zip here on KMN 60. At two, St. Albert seven, Lewis Central. At Northwest Missouri State University, from day one, experience a university like no other. In the classroom, you'll find career-ready academic programs and hands-on learning, not to mention championship sports teams and clubs. Find your passion and your people. Plus, textbooks and a fully loaded laptop are included in your tuition, with $19 million in scholarships and aid available. They also have a 97% placement rate. Visit nwmissouri.edu to apply today. Northwest Missouri State University, where Bearcats connect. PCSB, we believe in helping our customers. It's not just talk, it's setting them apart from the big box stores. They're a full service pharmacy where you can not only fill prescriptions, but they also carry an impressive line of medical equipment to meet all of your needs. So whether you need oxygen, CPAP, BiPAP, lift chairs, or diabetic shoes, Rogers Pharmacy has them all. Let their family serve your family. The full service family owned independent Rogers Pharmacy, located in Tarkio, Mound City, Maryville, and St. Joe. Visit RogersRx.com. Well, we go to the third here in Council Buffs. Trevor Mander, Brian Bertini here with you tonight. Seven zips, St. Albert leading, and they're going to get their six, seven, eight hitters with Brett Klusman, Carter White, and Jeff Miller up to the dish in this inning, Brian Bertini. Well, they've rolled the lineup over. They sent eight batters up the first inning, Trevor. Yep. They, they moved through the lineup again in the second inning. You know, got three runs courtesy to two home runs. And, you know, they're really confident going up facing Casey Clare right now. And I think you can almost see the guys as they come off the field, they grab the bats. They're ready to get up to the plate. So Brett Klusman comes up. He was a ground out right back in the first. And all these guys that made some outs are like, okay, I want to get in. I want to join this hit parade here. Yeah. Looks fun. A couple of homers tonight from Isaac Sherrill and Cy Patterson. First pitch to Klusman inside for a ball. One of the count. Again, Claire's job right now is to keep the damage where it's at, Trevor, at seven. Get a 1-2-3 get a yep. inning, go back, refocus, and chip away. 1-0 on the outside part of the zone. Nicely put by Claire, and it's a 1-1 count. This game, uh, I think to say it's got implications in the Hawkeye 10 would be maybe a little bit understatement. Lewis Central 8-1, St. Albert 8-3. That one misses outside, gets away from the catcher, Bond. Yeah, and, and it's a crosstown rival, so you yep. get the bragging rights right here in Council Bluffs, so it, it, you know that always plays into these kind of situations. So the 2-1 from Casey Claire. To Klusman, who chaps one to shallow right, and will run it out for a hit. Brent Klusman, a leadoff single. Right to the 3 4 hole, big hole over there between first and second. Just, uh, again, as hard as the field is, Trevor, you know, the, in, the ball, even though this is a grass infield, gets through pretty fast, and he finds a way to get on. Now Carter White, who singled and then was able to, to move to second on a balk earlier, is at the plates. Again, a lot of green shirts on the bases tonight. You'll take that if you're St. Albert. Not so much if you're Lewis Central. There's a bunt laid down by White and goes foul. Bond scoops it up. Yeah, sometimes it just feels like when everything goes right, it just goes right. You, 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 you make a mistake and it just seems to come out your way. You know, and then, then the flip side is every time it just seems like you're trying to find a break, you can't get it. and all, Everything kind of evens out on the season, it seems like, doesn't it? 
More often than not, here's the 0-1 from Claire to Y with runner on first. Claire will check Klossman. Now goes into his delivery. Puts that one outside, and it's one ball, one strike. We got Trenton John Nett pitching now. Thank you. I missed, missed the pitching change. A lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. So Claire kind of. Well, and I'm sure it was predicated on two things. One, he was getting touched up pretty good. Two, pitch count. There's other games to play here coming up. They've got a busy schedule, and you don't want to burn him up in one night. Now that one is hit in the gap and left. They will keep Klossman at second. They keep the line moving. Well, it was a hit and run, and he, he saw the shortstop move over. He threw an off-speed pitch to Jeanette, and he hit it right now in the 5-6 hole. The third so, Jeff again, Miller. perfect placement, perfect spot. And now Jeff Miller is looking to see if he can do some damage here. Now Jeff Miller, who flew out in the first, comes up. Trenton Johnette into the game tonight. Casey Clare got the start. Trenton Johnette coming in here at the top of the third. Let's check the runner at second. Now Miller shows bunt. Just gets it on the end of the bat, but it rolls foul. And the reason you want to bunt, even though Miller's a really good hitter, is you got first and second, nobody out. You want to advance the two runners, take the force off on, on the bags besides first, and put two guys in scoring position. Because the, the bottom of the lineup and the top has just been on fire. It's a one ball, no strikes, or no, it's an all one. I think you'll see Miller try one more bunt attempt here. They got runners at first and second. Johnette checks the runner at second, checks him a couple times. Now goes into the 0-1. Miller takes a healthy swing. It's an 0-2 count. Now Harrington was in on the grass at the first baseman, so he'll back up, play even with the bag. If you're Lewis Central, you're, if you hit on the corners, you're going to see if you can get a double yep. play. So 0-2 from Johnette to Jeff Miller. Brett Klusman at second, Carter White at first. And Coach Patterson could roll the dice a little bit and send his runners on this pitch yeah. and see if he can kind of get two guys. You know, even if he strikes out, you got two guys in scoring position. Nope, Miller will put one in play. Can't be fielded clean by Miles. Get it short. Does he get the throw at second? He does not. So it loads the bases on a fielder's choice from Jeff Miller. Well, and Moss guy was the on, on the move, was trying to get yep. towards second. The ball was kind of hit back, took kind of a carom back. And, he made a play, got a glove on it, but didn't get enough on the throw. And it's like that. It was, the bases are full of Falcons here in the top of the third. Nobody out. Dan McGrath, the nine hitter for St. Albert, up to the plate. Waiting for his first pitch from John Adds. McGrath puts that into center, coming over and underneath of it cleanly was the center fielder, Pomeranke, but tagging is Klusman. White had a big lead at second. Gets well, back. I, I think he thought it was going to fall. He actually went too far. He had to go back. Otherwise, they could have doubled him up. So I think he one time thought that was going to fall for a hit. It was caught. He had to baseman. touch third, Trevor, go, yep. you know, go back and then retreat back second safely. But a run on a sack and another run for the Falcons as they continue to add runs every inning. Makes it 8 nothing Now Colton Brennan back to the tap of the order. You know, baseball is a, a weird game, Brian. I don't know that many people here tonight saw this coming. Here's the first pitch to Brennan. It's in there for a strike. Well, I don't know if we didn't think that St. Albert couldn't put eight, eight runs, but maybe not this early. You know, and but again, Lewis Central's got the firepower. Yep. It, 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 it's a long yeah, game. I mean, this could end up 8 7, and people go, oh, it's a great game. You know, last night in softball, AL had a big lead over Lewis Central. I'll see, almost came back. Here's the 0 1. Chopped to third, can't be gloved cleanly by Mans. There's no play, and it keeps the bases loaded. Well, and th this is the frustrating part for Coach Waters right now is the routine plays are not being made. Those are outs. And, you know, this Lewis Central team has done a great job of getting those outs. So you always help your pitcher. And tonight, I think they're feeling just a little bit of pressure, and St. Albert is just taking advantage of everything. And that's why you see the coach coming out and talk to him right now. So one of the Lewis Central assistant coaches will come out and have a conversation with Trent and Johnette and the LC defense. Again, eight zip St. Albert here in the top of the third. They put four on in the first, three on in the second, one on in the third. 
Well, this is a they dangerous spot used. because two guys coming up are the two guys that just left the yard last inning, didn't yep. they? Yeah, with Isaac Sherrill and Cy Patterson. I, I think that's what the coach taught. Look, look, you can't give in anything middle inner up. These two guys are going to think lift the ball, get that launch angle. They want, you know, even if it lands out there on the grass, they're going to score a run. If, you know, bonus is they get something in the gaps or something over the fence. You know, this game can get so far out of reach, Trevor, you just can't catch up. And the problem, too, with the bases loaded, I mean, you have to pitch to them. You yeah. can't it, it, What can't you're hoping for it. here is a pitcher right now, John Ant wants either a strikeout or a ground ball back to the pitcher where you can get an out at home and maybe, you know, a, a quick out on the base. Again, one gone, bases loaded, eight zip St. Albert here in the top of the third on Cam N9, 60. First pitch to Cheryl, swing and miss. Well, he was thinking, <laughs> he was thinking add to that home run yeah. total, wasn't he, on that swing? Yeah, he went deep and then one batter later. Teammate Cy Patterson went deep. Cheryl was a two-run shot. Here's the 0-1 from Trenton Johnette. Oh, Cheryl will step out of the yeah. box. Isaac's got to be thinking lift the ball. You want to avoid a ball, like I said, a hard line drive. You want to get something lifted out there so you, you can score one run. You want to keep adding to this total if you're the St. Albert. 0-1 the count from Johnette to Cheryl with one gone. Low and outside, and it's a 1-1 count. Casey Clare got the start tonight for Lewis Central, went two innings. Then they made the pitching change, brought Trenton Johnette in. Right now, Carter White at third. That is hit to center. Coming back underneath it is Palm Renke. He's there. White will tag. The throw is cut off, and it's another sacrifice RBI. That's exactly Carter what Cheryl wanted to do, Trevor. He got it up in the air high enough to get it to deep enough to the outfield, score that run from third easily. And again, they continue to add runs. And you've got a guy here, a very dangerous hitter up at the plate that went to solo yard last time with a moonshot. That just yeah. was really high. Pretty sure that one landed over in the Metro Crossing area across <laughs> the road. And two gone, runners on first and second. Nine zip St. Albert. Patterson sits on that one, it's outside for a ball. Uh, Johnette knows he doesn't want to throw anything no. middle in. You know, a couple of rules, if you want to really tie a hitter up, you can jam him in, but with the quick hands of, of Cy Patterson, it's, it's a dangerous proposition, especially with a guy with an open stance. Johnette checks the runner at second. Now the 1-0 in the gap, in left. They will send Brennan around. There will be no throw, and it's a 10-run game here in the top of the wow. third. Another RBI from Cy Patterson. Yeah, he just took a pitch on the middle end. The low, just turned his hands, got it rolled over through the 5-6 hole. With two outs, the runner's going on contact, you know, so he's he's thinking score right away. And just like that, a 10 spot up on the board for the for the Falcons. And this offense, Trevor, like I said, is clicking on all cylinders right now. So we've got a runner on second. That was Miller that scored. It's now Colton Brennan at second. Still two gone. It's Brendan Monahan up to the play. He's got a single to his name tonight. Shows bunt, pulls back. It is high for a ball. I don't, they're going to bunt with two strikes. That's just more of a. Right. I might see if I can get you to catch yeah, it. You're maybe not, lose you're track not. of the ball, pass ball, move a couple runners up. Yeah, you're two outs, and you want to hit if you've got a 10 run lead. And right. Your you're guys are you're feeling it right now at the plate. It's the 1 0. John Ed will check. Brennan at second. Now launches the 1 0. It's in the dirt. Bond keeps it in front of him, and it's a 2 0 count. Monahan trying to hit something hard anywhere he can. Love to get something maybe in that right center gap. That would score the runner from second. Move a runner to third. So the 2 0 with two gone and two on. Liner to second and not fielded cleanly. Did they get it though in time? I think they did. That was a tough play to make. For Fort, he was able to avert disaster. That's how the inning ends, but not before St. Albert gets three more. They lead 10 zip through two and a half around Cam N916. N916. OSI is considered a premier global food provider by many of the world's leading brands. OSI delivers leading edge food solutions for product development as well as processing, and much of it is done from their Oakland, Iowa plant. Being a leader in the industry allows OSI Oakland to give back to the communities by sponsoring area high school events, offering special programs for veterans, and other community outreach programs. To learn more, visit osigroup.com and search for the Oakland, Iowa location.
When people ask me what my dad does, I still don't have exactly the right answer. This is Sadie and my dad is Shane from Shop Ag. I know he takes calls and texts early in the morning and late at night. I know he does research to find the best products at the best prices. And I know he says, I'll get that done for you. But I guess I'm still not sure what all is involved in every aspect of agronomy. But I know my dad does it all. Call Shane at Shop Ag and see for yourself. 712-520-1333. Welcome back to Council Bluffs here on Cam Welcome back to Council Bluffs here on Cam N960. Trevor Rader, Brian Bertini here with you tonight. Been a strong start for St. Albert's. Albert's. They win 10. Well, again, they come in really on fire offensively this week, and they've done nothing to disappoint and, and show us any different, have they, Trevor? No, they've. I mean, anytime you can put up 10 runs against <laughs> the number what? against the number nine ranked team in Class 4A and a pitcher that came in not allowing any earned exactly. runs. Exactly. I mean. They're very, you can just, they're very, very confident at the plate. They're getting good swings. They're hitting good pitches for good hitter. I mean, and Casey Clare just, you know, just didn't have a lot of wiggle room. He couldn't work the corners good enough, and they just kept hitting everything hard. Then the, some of the outs that Lewis Central needed to make, Trevor, they were unable to do that, and that just kind of opens the floodgates, and that's how a game can get away from you like it is right now. Now our campaign sports rules expert, Ryan Matheny, does tell me it is 15 after four is the mercy two, rule. Fielder, Devin so I believe in softball, I think it's 12 after four, 15 after three, 10 after I think. five, right. So, and then in baseball, it's 15 after four, 10 after five. So, I mean, St. Albert would have put up five more in the fourth and Lewis Central be scoreless in the third and fourth to get that. And they would obviously not like to not have that happen. This yeah. up comes Drew Naylor, the nine-hitter, they're still working their way through the lineup the first time. Right. Lewis Central just wants to find a way to get a couple runs on and say, okay, guys, we got some runs. And then you, you'll get a couple one, two, three innings, chip away, and all of a sudden that 10-0 lead evaporates. Naylor hit one to left, but there to get it. That's kind of in a blind spot for yep. us, but Carter underneath White. it goes Carter White. He was playing in, but Carter White's got such good speed, and he tracks the ball well, Trevor. He ran that one down nicely. And as a pitcher, you just love when your outfielders can cover a lot of ground. And now it's back to the top of the order. Jonah Pomeranke was hit by a pitch back in the first. Will come up to the plate. Luke Hubbard getting the start for St. Albert tonight. He's been pretty efficient. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Coach Patterson might decide to, to roll with him here. They don't have any games. They have a game tomorrow night versus Shenandoah. So chopper to third. The throw from Miller to Patterson is there in time for the 5-3 put out, two gone. And, you, and as, a, as a defensive player right now, when you look up and see you got 10 runs, you're, you're playing really relaxed, Trevor, because right. you're like, we got cushion, you know. So now all those routine plays become really, really good and confident and comfortable. And suddenly, just like that, three pitches, two outs. J.C. Dermody up to the dish now. Two gone here in the bottom of the third. Dermody sits on that one just outside. Hubbard has allowed one hit, has walked one, and has hit one. But he hasn't done it via the strikeout. You know, he's just been really efficient, working working hitters, getting to hit some pitches that he wants. One well, inside part of his own. He's only got strike. one strikeout, isn't he? Uh, yeah. Yes, but hey, he's been trusting his defense. It's obviously been working. Here's the 1-1. One, one. The outside part of the yeah, zone again. There's that breaking ball, the left-handed hitter. You started just outside it in the right-handed batter's box, bring it back in over the outside corner perfectly. Got the two strikes. So one, two with two gone. Trying to get out of this inning is Hubbard. That one inside on Dermody had to pull away from it. He tried to jam him and see if he could run one back up and in. And Dermody tried to get a little piece of that, see if he could catch it, but didn't get him. And I think Hubbard said he was kind of disappointed he didn't kind of grip it the way he wanted on that one. Two, two. On the way with two gone. Swing and a miss. Second strikeout of the night for Hubbard. Ends the inning. It's three up, three down, three done for LC. We go to the fourth. Ten zip St. Albert here on KMA 960. At the end of three, the score remains. St. Albert 10, Lewis Central 0. Did you say edit score? Yeah, the edit runs and then 0. That's right. At the ARC Group, we take a disciplined approach to marketing. We have
experts teach our children important life lessons, like how to work together as a team and the importance of a great coach. TS Prosperity Group, a division of TS Bank, understands the importance of a successful team, especially when it comes to your finances. Let TS Prosperity Group be the coach of your financial team to help guide you to success with the goal of sleeping better, knowing your prosperity is protected for the next generation. Contact TSProsperityGroup.com to schedule your free 30-minute consultation today. Welcome back to Council Bluffs here on KMA 960. Trevor Rader, Brian Bertini here with you tonight. Hawkeye 10 Conference Baseball Action. It is 10-zip St. Albert. We go to the fourth. The Falcons have been able to click offensively tonight. Maybe trying to bring this game to a premature end. They've got Brenda Monahan, Jackson Lennon, Brett Klusman. Yeah, and if you're St. Albert, you, you, you want to get this some more runs and really put this away because LC is still potent in the offense. Yep. And all it takes is one big inning by them. First pitch is high. Sitting on that one is Lennon. So you'd love to see if you can get, again, they've been really good, Trevor, tonight, of getting guys on early in the inning. So it'll be Lennon, Klusman, White. They went basically through the order. Lennon sends one into shallow center. And underneath, that's Palm Reckie. There's one guy. Up comes Brett Klusman. Had a single 12. and scored a run. Brett Back in the Plus third man. inning. It seems like they've probably batted seven, six or seven, eight guys every inning, haven't they? Yeah. Trenton Johnette pitching for Lewis Central. Yeah, it, St. Albert went eight in the the first, six in the second, eight in the third. So 22 batters already tonight. That one's the inside part of the zone by Johnette. Nice pitch. It's an 0-1 count to Klusman. One gone here in the fourth. Klusman just gets a piece of that one, fouls it back. And the St. Albert team will be in action tomorrow night. They'll host Shenandoah yep. tomorrow night. In they a had a team. really weird game the first time they played. That was at Shenandoah. Shenandoah was up, I believe, 12 nothing. Yes, that's right. St. Albert come all the way back. I think 20 to 16, and that game, you know, it, it ran so late. In a game like that, obviously, you use up a lot of arms. They... I was originally going to be a doubleheader because Hawkeye 10 venturing with those north-south doubleheaders this year. Here's the 1-2 from John Ad to Klossman. Just gets a piece of it. They end up saying, hey, we'll just reschedule. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want a team to get back that right. late and play, to play past midnight. So, good call. Yeah, well, I think they already played. I don't remember what time it was, but it was late. Here's the 1-2 from John Ad to Klossman. I know it was at least 10.30 or 11. Klossman fouls that one away, spoils that pitch. It lands on the football field. I think it's 5-2 to two on the softball diamond over there. Lewis Central girls ahead, I believe. That's a very intriguing matchup. Those two met earlier this year. Like, I believe first game of the year, St. Albert got the win. Yeah, and they've, they've got some potent girls on offense as well. Klossman sits on that one. It's upstairs for a ball. In warm nights like this, the ball really carries well. You know, it's it going to be 100 degrees, 101 degrees today. Even now, it's still really warm, so the ball really carries. 2-2, two, two. did he go? He did not. No, they say he didn't. That's a 3-2. I mean, it's hot, but we are fortunate enough we're in a press box with a fan at the very least. Small Thanks fan. To, hey, <laughs> I will not complain. Thanks to LC Athletic Director Jim Dermody for that. Here's the payoff pitch. Klusman swings and misses. There's two gone in this inning. Well, this is the first time that the two outs have gone, and there's not been a Falcon now runner on base, so... Things looking up for the Titans here is they would love to keep this at 10 and, and see if they can start working out of the hole. Now Carter White comes up again with two gone. 10 zip St. Albert leading. White sends that one into shallow right and not able to make the diving play was the second baseman for it. Coming over from right as well was Naylor. That was just kind of in the Is that the perfect triangle. spot? Yeah, it's just one of those, that, baseman, you know. Yeah. Miller. In the right spot, and again, St. Albert continues to avoid the one, two, three innings. They got a guy with two outs, and with this lineup, and Jeff Miller at the plate, who knows? So, Carter White gets a two out single. Now, Jeff Miller reached on a fielder's choice, scored a run back in the second. Comes up, John Epp makes the throw over to first. And Carter White with good speed, Turned trying to get a really big hop here. You know, he, he, might, he might go. They've had a, some success here on the bases tonight, Trevor. Johnette takes a long stare at White, now goes into his delivery. He'll throw one over. Almost got him. Uh, good quick to move by Johnette. It was a good spot, and Harrington did a good job with the slap tag, but White's hand 
just in there a little bit. So two gone, a runner on. And up to the plate is Jeff Miller. Six on that one, and it's an 0 one count. A little off-speed pitch. Miller going to play going to play collegiate tennis at Wartburg. Had a fantastic spring, did Jeff, he this did. year. There's the 0-1. Oh, they're going to make another throw attempt down the line. It gets away from the first baseman, Harrington, but White had slid, so there's no Well, and no that's threat. the fear of that play. You know, there's a lot of foul ground here at Lewis Central Baseball Field, yep. so if it gets by the first baseman and it gets along that fence, White's at second, possibly third, you know, depending on where it goes. Still an 0-1 from Johnette to Miller, and Miller pops that one up. Bond trying to find it. Vaughn does find it, and that's how the inning ends. So a clean frame, the first one tonight for LC defensively. Now they got to get some runs. We go to the bottom of the fourth, 10 zip St. Alberts here on KMA 960. That's what you'll hear from customers that choose Barrett Auto Center of Glenwood time and time again. Barrett customers come in for vehicles and service work, but they come back for conversation and honest advice. They want one of the largest pre-owned and fully serviced inventories in KMA land, and they return when they've gone elsewhere and it just isn't the same. See and believe for yourself how little differences add up to a better car buying experience. Come back to Barrett's and Barrett'sAutoCenter.com. Bedford Drug offers more than just your prescriptions. They are now providing immunizations, including flu, pneumonia, and shingles vaccinations. Plus, they offer prescription synchronization for your convenience. Stop in and visit with pharmacist Mike Schweitzer for more information. See their expanded gift selection, too. Convenience, competitive prices, and people willing to help. Just a few reasons that Bedford Drug is the pharmacy with more for you. Get professional and experienced advice on the spot. Bedford Drug on Main Street in Bedford. Welcome back to Council Bluffs here on KMA 960. Trevor Mater, Brian Bertini here with you tonight. They've given us water in the press box. I knew we picked the right game to be at on this hot Thursday night. 10 zip St. Albert leading Lewis Central as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Brian, moments ago, Lewis Central a little work a clean inning defensively. Now you got to get some runs on the board. Yeah, you do. This is it. I mean, you, you've got it. You've got two at bats, Trevor, to scratch a run. Or this game's, you know, if the score stands as it is, it's going to be over kind of quick. So yeah, you'd love to get one or two here, hold them again, and then find a way to chip back into it. Coming up for Lewis Central in this inning, it's going to be now batting, number 11, Britton catcher, Bond, Britton Aaron Bond. Harrington, and it was Casey Clare's spot in the lineup. We'll see. But they're facing Luke Hubbard, who's been really efficient tonight. Yep. Yeah, he's, you know, nothing super flashy, only two strikeouts, only giving up the one hit, walked one, hit one. Here's the first pitch to Bond. That one well, like just a bit outside. He overthrew you can say. that just a little bit right there. Always wanted to say that. And he might know this might be his last inning. You know, the coach might have said, "Hey, you know, get me through this inning," and then switch. So he tried to throw a little, little extra on that one. One out of the count. Is Major League your favorite baseball movie? Um, I don't, I don't know. Here's the one. Probably not. I th actually, my favorite one's probably Bad News Bears. Okay, the I original. don't know that I've ever seen the original. 2-0 the count, by the way. It's just too many good classic things. I mean, how could you not like Kelly Leak? 2-0. Now it on the way to Bond. That one's upstairs. Yeah, I don't think I, the only one I've seen is the remix with or the remake with was it Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, that that no, was You got to watch the version with Walter Matthau. So 3-0 the count now. You know you love baseball movie tech during a baseball broadcast, and Bond sits on that one. It's a four-pitch walk. So again, if you're Lewis Central now right now, Trevor, 13, you find any way to get guys on via the walk, hit Aaron. batsman, errors. So right now, you've done what you want. And courtesy runner coming in here too, Trevor. Looks like number 21, the so Titans. Uh, that is going to be Chase Wallace coming in. It's a courtesy runner for Bond, the catcher. If you're listening and you want to share your input on your favorite baseball movie, right, another one I like is called Bang the Drum Slowly. I've never even That's never a seen great that movie. One. It's about. Uh, Catcher. Moneyball's great, but it's a little too Hollywood. So here's the first pitch coming up to Aaron Harrington. He sits on that one. I think Robert De Niro is actually banging the drum slowly. It? It's, about a, it's about a catcher and the relationship he has. and He's a little a little slower thinking and, and, and stuff like that in the bond that they have. So one of the count from Luke Hubbard to Aaron Harrington. That one is in there for a strike. Of course, Field of one. Dreams, the Iowa That's people you have to think Field I'd of Dreams. Premier Major League, a league of their own would probably have been one of my favorites. Yeah, league of their own is a great one as well. 
and uh, eight men out. Yeah, yep, so that's a good Chicago one. White Sox. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Harrington sends that to center. Drifting back is Monahan, and it'll drop against the fence. They will send Harrington to third. That's a tough play. The cutoff, though, fell down, and Aaron Harrington gets to third safely. Well, kind of a misplayed out there. I think the, uh, the ball had a lot more air on it and it caught some of that wind up in the jet there, Trevor, and it carried a lot farther than I think nine. Brandon Monahan thought it was going to. And he, he kind of went out and didn't get underneath it and lands. He kind of slipped as well, and suddenly now there's some Titans in scoring position. So we've got courtesy runner at third, Harrington at second. And Casey Clare, who's batting, is playing third. So here's that little window of opportunity for the Titans right now. You can just feel it here on the bottom of the fourth. You're down 10. You can chip away. You can extend the game. But you've got to find a way to play the run here. So Clare got the start tonight pitching, playing third at the moment. Six on that one for a ball. We'll try to sort those lineup changes out for you here in a little bit. 10 zip St. Albert. In the bottom of the fourth, Lewis Central trying to scratch back into this one. And at the very least, keep it alive, and that is sent to center. Drifting back is Monahan. Another tough play. It will be against the fence. Can't Dropped get it. it, though, and that will score a run easily. At least one. They will hold Harrington at third. But it's an RBI and a run on for Lewis Central. Well, he hit it really well, and, you know, it got back. And, again, Monahan played it. Was there, Trevor? I thought he was going to make the catch, and he just it just fell out of his glove. So the run scores on the well, – I don't know if you're going to call that a hit or an error. I suppose maybe a hit. And the runner at third and second, and there's no out. So this is that little moment right now where the Titans got some momentum. And the St. Albert defense comes in. I wonder, you know, we saw some bullpen action. Well, They're going to stay with Hubbard for the time being. I think the coach is just talking about, look, hey, go back to, you know, hitting your spots, changing speeds. You know, look, we're up 10-1. You know, let's get out, right? Let's get right. outs. You know, if they score another run, fine. Let's get outs. Let's limit the damage. Let's go back in and get on offense. But Lewis Central right now, they would love to score a couple more runs with nobody out because this could turn into a big inning for the Titans. Still nobody out. Two honors on second, third, 10-1. Kale Mosket at the plate. And Mosket sits on that one outside part of the zone. It's his called strike. St. Albert 15-5 on the year, 8-3 in the Hawkeye 10. Lewis Central 12-2, 8-1. That lone conference loss came in a second game of a doubleheader the other night against Kemper. That one nicely put by Hubbard, and it's strike two. And a pitcher's best friend right now is a strikeout, right? Yes. That, that uh, no ball put in play, nobody can advance. So Hubbard would love nothing to get a strikeout here and get that first down the board. And Lewis Central would love nothing more than a base hit from Kiel Moskett. The 0-2 called strike three, got him looking third time tonight, but yeah. Hubbard retires the batter. Pretty much same spot, wasn't it, Trevor? Yep. He painted that outside corner and... Got it. So big sigh of relief right there for Luke Hubbard and Falcons defense get out number one. And now it's Luke Meyer, the designated hitter. Again, Meyer's trying to think, get it on the green, score, run it, whatever you can. Check swing. They're going to call it a ball. Surprised that maybe the catcher didn't ask the third base up down there. So Meyer designated hitting tonight in the lineup for Manns, Logan Manns, who was playing third. They've moved Casey Clare, who started the night pitching. And we have a three-man crew tonight, baseball yep. tonight. 2-0 the count from Hubbard to Meyer. One gone, two on. That one outside part of his own. Klusmas, or Hubbard is really putting them on the corners. It's been effective. Two and one the count. Again, he's hoping a strikeout or maybe a comeback or right back to the mound where he can freeze the runner in third. I want over the center uh, of the plane. It's a two-two. Just kind of got him sitting. Ball on the outside. The right-handed batter's box brings it back in, and the left-handed batter unable to pull the trigger and back to two-two count. So two balls, two strikes, one gone. Runners on second, and third for LC. Meyer just pushes that one foul along the third baseline. Well, he was behind on that pitch, but he got enough of it and extends the at-bat. That's all that matters because now he gets another pitch, reset, refocus. And if Hubbard's a little off, Meyer could, again, potentially do some damage here with one, with one swing, score two runs. 2-2. Two -two. LC trying to mount a comeback. They were down 10-0. They've already got one on. 
Chance to play it a couple more. Meyer lines one just foul. He's the last two have been a couple of feet away from yeah, down the easily left field scoring line, at least one, maybe down two. The right field line, so maybe Means now center between the right between the lines, right? Yeah. Preferably something he'd love nothing more than to go right over the pitcher's head, wouldn't he? That would be that'd be ideal. Okay, two balls, two strikes. It is Luke Hubbard pitching to Luke Meyer. It's a 2-2, popped up, fouling out of play. This might be a, a Cam A sports record for guys named Luke in a baseball game that I can recall. We got Luke Hubbard, Luke Meyer, Luke Manns. Uh, we've got, uh, actually, that's no, Logan Manns, excuse me. Um, but we've got two of them, so maybe that's not a record. Maybe it just ties the record. Luke Woolman for LC on the bench as well as that one. This is for a ball, and it's a full count. Probably find a few Lukes in the stand, so you Probably. might be right. Some of a common name. <laughs> So full count from Luke Hubbard to Luke Meyer. One guy, the runners on second, third. Meyer gets a piece of it. It's going to drop, and they will score at least one. The throw is wide, and scoring safely is Aaron Harrington. Now two on him. The throw throw. They got him. Off oh. the bag came the runner, Claire. Good heads up play by McGrath. He, and the runner from first took advantage of the overthrow. He advanced up, looked like a big... Nice win-win for the Titans, but runner at third kind of got caught in that no-man's land, slipped a little yeah. bit, McGrath threw a strike, and they erased a runner at third, but another run plates for the Titans. Just your traditional 8-2-5 put out that retires Casey Clare. If you're scoring at home. If you're scoring at home. And if you're not, I mean, I'm, I don't, does anyone actually score at home? Here's Peyton Ford up to the plate. He yes, swings at the actually. first pitch. And that'll barely leave the infield, but Cheryl's underneath it. That'll end the inning. But Lewis Central gets two on. It's 10 2. We go to the fifth here on Cam at 60. Bottom of four, say For over 25 years, Chad Mobility has provided you the latest technology, competitive prices, and a nationwide high speed network. Though important, we're a whole lot more. We serve your hometown communities, sponsor your local chambers and events. It's our goal to work hard while giving back to those who graciously support us. At Chat Mobility, our interests are much deeper than providing great service. We're just committed to serving you. To learn more, see us at chatmobility.com today. This is Kane with Gowing Plumbing. Gowing Plumbing is the name to remember for 24-hour service. That includes after hours and weekends, because that is when problems usually occur. We're located in Shenandoah, but we also serve the surrounding communities. That's the way it's been done for more than 70 years. And we work on boiler heat. So call fully licensed Gowing Plumbing any time of day or night, 246-1803 or after hours at 712-310-9248. Welcome back to Council Bluffs here on Welcome back to Council Bluffs here on KMA 960. It is 10 2. We go to the fifth. Brian Bertini, just moments ago, the Titans able to get a couple back, gets out of that 10-run rule well, scare for they, the time they being. Extend the game a little bit. Now, if that wants to, if St. Albert wants now to end this in this inning, they have to come up with two runs of their own. But they've shown that they can put runs on the board. Right now, they've got to find a way to get back in the groove because they had a one-two-three inning last time. Uh, actually, they had a no, that's they had right, two-out single, single from that's Carter right. Wide. Here's Dan McGrath, the nine-hitter in the lineup, the catching tonight fouls that one. Yeah, they had I believe, eight batters in the first inning, six in the second, eight in the third, and they only got four to the plate. Well, John, that's done a round. nice job of just kind of righting the ship here a little bit, Trevor. So far. Gets McGrath to swing at a slow roller. John Ett, the throw to first to Harrington. He brought him off the oh, bag. He did, and John Ett knew it. He, he just hesitated a little bit. He saw the runner going fast. That's why you always hustle out and, and always tell – Kids coaching. There's three things that can go wrong on a ground ball. So you got to somebody's got to pick it up, somebody's got to throw it, and somebody's got to catch it. And uh, sometimes it, it, one of those things doesn't work the way you want, and that's why St. Albert with the runner on base. Back to the top, the order with Colton Brennan, the leadoff hitter for the Falcons. Can 10-2. St. Albert leading Lewis Central here on Cam Ni and 60. A fun night. It's cool. Off. It's, it's a nice. It's warm, but you know what? It's it's tolerable. It's a nice evening right now, and yeah. it's well, dry. I mean, I, I know it's dry, know, but I told myself after sitting at home last year for three months doing nothing, I would I would never complain about the weather. You can complain I a little bit. I could, but, but again, it's it's still better than sitting home doing nothing, I guess. Bet. We've got a stoppage, and now we 
get sorted out, whatever the stoppage was for. And Trenton Johnette returns to the hill to face Colton Brennan. Pickoff attempt at first, not there. McGrath gets back. St. Albert might be thinking small ball here, see if they can get a run of the run, put another runner in scoring position. You got two pretty potent bats up in Isaac Sherrill and Cy Patterson following you up. But misses away, gets away from the catcher bond, and they have a courtesy runner for St. Albert that'll safely get to second. So now I think you're going to see the bunt on. Now you got a perfect scenario if you're Coach Patterson because now you got a runner at second, nobody out. Now you can have your leadoff hitter move him over. Second, third base, and now you got two guys that have just been swinging the hot sticks coming up. It's DJ Wilage, courtesy running, by the way, for St. Albert. He was part of some good relays for the Falcons track team. As that's queued up, hop to short on one. Moss get throw to Harrington, gets him by a step. And then Wilage got off the bat, gets back safely, but not by much. Yeah, that's the only thing Pat, Coach Patterson didn't want was a ball hit to the left side of the infield because the runner has to freeze. Anything hit first or second side, runner advances. But um, you're trusting your guy right there. You're trusting Colton Brennan to see if he can punch a hit through. Didn't get it. Nice play by Mallscott at the shortstop. Yeah, so Brennan goes down. There's one guy, Isaac Sherrill, who went yard back in the second, steps up to the plate, sits on that one outside part of the zone. I called strike. Trent Johnette's done a nice job. Yeah. Of, you know, they've, they've got a few hits, but he's really changed up a few things, moved the ball around, throw some off-speed pitches, and kind of slowed at least temporarily this St. Albert offense. The next pitch inside on Sherrill. It's a ball, one and one the count. St. Albert looking for their 16th win of the year. They'll turn around coming up. Tomorrow night gets Shenandoah. One ball, one strike, one gone here in the top of the fifth. Cheryl kind of lunged at that one, just gets a piece of yeah, it foul. Trying to punch it over to the right side, you know, just get something over that way. Is Good pitch by John Ant to kind of start that middle out and went out. Now Lewis Central coming up will get Waukee. On Saturday, Bishop Heelan, as well as part of the Battle of the Bluffs, and they get a fun Hawkeye 10 battle with Clorinda, a doubleheader coming up Monday night. Two balls, two strikes to Isaac Sherrill. Still 10 2 in the top of the fifth. That one misses high, and it's a full count. And Monday's forecast is cold fronts coming through. It could be highs in the 70s, I like take 78 that. Monday. So you could yep. be seeing people in jackets <laughs> yeah. on Monday no, night. I, I think I will be welcoming 78. Yeah. We've got Coon Rapids Bear to Cam Monday night for you on the Cam Airwaves. Also, we'll have uh, Nottoe Valley, Southwest Valley softball with Austin and Gordon. That's foul. No, it's going to stay in play. Arrington trying to track it, and... Finally coming over from second to get it as fourth, and there's two gone. Good pitch by Jeanette right there, went down and in, and Cheryl tried to lift it, but got too much under two. it, induced First the infield pop-up, and you know, now Jeanette one out away, Trevor, from stranding a leadoff guy at second base, so this will be a huge out right here for the Titans. So Cy Patterson up to the plate. He homered earlier as well. 10-2 St. Albert here in the top of the fifth. We'll get time called. Johnette will step back into the into the bump. That one is just inside for a ball. One of the count on Cy Patterson. Again, Patterson. They're gonna call balk and give Wilage third, it looks uh, like. It must not have maybe come set right there on the pitch, so. You know, it, it, in the scope of things, it doesn't look like much. There's two outs. But what it does, and now an error or a pass ball could play to run. So, yeah, every base advance, Trevor, it, it has an impact. So move Wilage to third with a pitch to Cy Patterson on the way. He just gets a piece oh, of he it. He just missed that. He's right on. Fouled it straight back. And Cy knew he, he had a pitch he could handle right there and just missed that. Patterson, a standout multi-sport athlete for the Falcons. I think it, you, he would agree that baseball is his best sport. It's the one he's going to do collegiately, a D-Mac. He'll be a bear. Boone, campus. The one Sits on that. It's a called strike, 0-2. Oh Donette snapped that off again. Nice tight rotation on that breaking ball. And Patterson 
decided it was just good pitch, couldn't get it, and wait for the next one. John Hatt trying to get out of this inning unscathed. Here's the 0-2. He misses outside. John Hatt's got to be two. careful of here. There is an open base at first, so a swinging third strike miss. Run yep. and go and the potential runner at third could score. That's why that balk is huge right now. One ball, two strikes, two gone from Trenton Johnett to Cy Patterson. Johnett checks Wilage at third. And now we've got the sprinklers going off. I wonder, everyone turned over and looked to left field, and the sprinklers <laughs> are going off in left field. Probably on a timer. And you uh, can't make that up. We've got a delay for, for water. the sprinklers. And <laughs> maybe now, did they? looks like maybe now they went off. They're all timed on those electronic timers, and, you know, it, somebody probably had it set. Probably the last night there was probably no game here, and it was, went yep. off early enough, and <laughs> didn't get changed. Just a short delay. Now here's the one, two, just misses. So it's what you're hoping two, now two. is, it, you know, it, a player doesn't run over there, and it's a little wet on top of the yeah. grass, and they slip. But Patterson would love nothing more to see if he could punch this into right center. 2-2, two, two, two gone. Patterson does get a piece of it. It's drifting foul. Harrington in pursuit underneath it, and that's how the frame ends. So, again, St. Albert can't get any across. They strand a runner at third. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth, 10-2. St. Albert leading Lewis Central here on KMA 960. Lows of off around 73 tonight under partly cloudy skies. Winds out of the south, 8 to 15 miles per hour. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Tomorrow, chance for scattered thunderstorms. High temperatures reach up to 95. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Tomorrow night, lows dip down to about 67. Partly cloudy skies. Temperatures above average. Saturday and Sunday with highs in the low 90s. Thunderstorms possible both days. I'm weatherology meteorologist Laura Lockwood on KMA. Right now, 92. HawkeyeFord.com. It's where you'll find a complete selection of pre-owned cars and trucks. It's also where you can estimate your trade-in value and receive a no-hassle quote. Since 1988, Hawkeye Ford has been offering a high level of customer service and a commitment to making the process of buying your vehicle an enjoyable one. They strive to deliver 100% satisfaction every time you visit their location on Highway 34 east of Red Oak or on their 24-7 location, HawkeyeFord.com. Well, we go to the bottom of the fifth. Lewis Central is going to bring the fifth. this game at least into the sixth. They're going to try to mount the comeback, and coming up for them is their 9-1-2. Drew Naylor in the nine hole. Jonah Pomeranke, J.C. Dermody. Again, 10-2. And they're going to have yeah, Devin Naylor up to the plate. And 10-2. St. Albert leading Lewis Central. Find your way to chip in, Trevor. Get a couple runs here. Here's Devin Naylor. Well, and Sits on Coach that Patterson while. electing to kind of go Luke Hubbard now. You're probably at the point now where you know, you're watching the pitch count. And yeah. if you don't think you're going to use him tomorrow night, you know, you'll have him for Monday. So you might just take your – say, Luke, you're my guy. Let's finish this off. Be efficient on your pitches. Let's get, to, get you into the six. Here's a 1-0 to Naylor. Gets a piece of it. Is carrying foul and not able to make the play at first as Patterson. Now, we saw earlier they did have an arm warming, warming up in the bullpen. It was Eric Mathai. Uh, he's down there again right now. So, and just you got to have somebody up and ready so that if Lewis Central starts to put yep. some things and the pitch count goes up a little bit higher than you want, Coach Duncan Patterson can make the move. Here's the 1-1. One, one. It's in there for a strike on Naylor. Now, Mathai is going to pitch collegiately at Grandview. I said left-handed like pitchers it. are a definite commodity, and if you can throw strikes, change speeds as a lefty, you will, you will so find a career. 1-2 to Naylor. Shallows it into right. Klusman can't get it on a hop, and it's a leadoff single for Devin Naylor. Again, Lewis Central is finding some ways to get some runners on here. Late innings, that's how they now played it two the last 10. time. The center fielder, now we Jonah go to the back of the top of the order. Jonah Pomeranke, 0 for 1 tonight, hit by pitch. And they're not... 12 and 2 on the year for for no reason. No. I mean, this is a team that's not, they're not in panic mode, are they, Trevor? Not in the slightest. Get runner on it. First, nobody out. That one was inside. Pomeranke was swinging, though, and it's an 0-1 count. Nice pitch by Luke right there. Went up and in, tried to jam the hitter. 
You're just tuning in, St. Albert led 10 zip after three. LC got two on of the fourth. They've worked a couple of clean frames. Pomeranke pops that one up. Out of play. Again, this Brings is a conference game, count. so this has implications, you know, just even beyond the conference. If you're state, boy state union looking at this and you see a St. Albert that can comes in and, and take care of a 4A squad, you're going to look at that as a yep. team that maybe we're going to have people go through the St. Albert squad. You know, last year, St. Albert kind of turned heads with, I mean, the first two nights of the year is that one's outside on Palm Ranky. You know, the first two nights of the year, they beat Harlan and LC. It, it does, and it gets it gets noticed. And now they're up, they're on the watch because they started the year number one. And you know, you'd love to move up and get to that top two or three spots because you get the good seed state yep. tournament if you reach it. There's the one two. That one misses inside. It gets by the catcher McGrath, taking second, sliding his nailer. Well, when when Hubbard's dropped down to that three quarter look on that breaking ball, he's missed on that side right there. That's that rotation not as tight at the overhand and. That time, as I mentioned, kicked off the glove of McGrath and now a runner in scoring position for Lewis Central. So 2-2 two -two with nobody out. That one is low for a ball on Pomeranke. It fills the count. You yeah, almost get a feeling here. If Hubbard goes another batter or two, might be the end his night. So I think he wants to finish strong here. So the full count from Luke Hubbard to Jonah Pomeranke is just outside it's a walk runners on first and second and that might be a night for luke hubbard maybe not now batting number three okay. the left fielder jc they're gonna trust him for the time Dermody. being so it brings jc dermody up to the dish for lewis central yeah, I, thought I saw coach patterson kind of working his way out but you might elect the situation maybe figuring there's going to be a bun here trevor so you might let, let this guy throw to it Dermody struck out earlier. He pops up there. He's not thrilled with himself about that one. As well, that's that's it's third. almost like a strikeout because it's an infield fly, basically. The runners, you know, the batter's out, basically, because it's an infield fly. And just like that on one pitch, that all-important first out. And four still in play with yep. Jenner's at first Britain and second. Bond. Here comes Britton Bond up to the plate. Bottom of the fifth, 10-2 St. Albert leading Lewis Central. Here on KMA 960 and video streaming, KMALand.com. Huge thanks to Levi Sun for helping us out with that. First pitch to Bond. Outside part of the zone called strike. and won the count. Infield's in on the corners here tonight for the Falcons. They're looking to see if they can knock the ball down. Get an out is all you're thinking yep. of St. Albert. Here's the 0-1. Kept in front of McGrath. They kind of messed one, him up one. right. He yeah. looked like he was expecting something else. And flinched on that but he did a good job as a catcher does block the ball keep it down in front preventing a runner from advancing so one and one from hubbard to bond that one's in there for a strike brings it to a one two okay. we've got lots of fun stuff coming up next week we've got southwest valley not valley softball on cam a 961 and i've got coon rapids baird cam baseball on Cam AFM, as here's the one two misses away. Uh, didn't miss by much. Well, you got no. something pretty exciting coming up next Saturday, don't uh, you? Yeah, I think I'm going to go fishing next Saturday. Next Saturday. No, I've got, got could, other plans. I, I could, but that's, there, a, uh, that's a side story because there would be somebody yeah. that would probably be really mad with me. Uh, Logan Magnolia HSTW Tuesday night, and then I've got Trainer Tri Center Wednesday night. That's fouled back by Bond. Uh, and then I get a nice. Uh, two-week reprieve from baseball softball action and we'll hit the ground running we'll still have games for you Derek Martin Ryan Matheny will be busy I will uh, I will not be here's the 2-2 from Luke Hubbard to Britton Bond runners on first and second Ooh, it didn't miss by much throw down the line gets away oh. from Patterson at first he's able to scoop it back up dangerous though. throw by McGrath I think it was a good play but Patterson I think at first wasn't quite expecting the throw to come no. that way it kind of tailed off and well that that 2-2 yeah. two -two did not miss by much no and if that ball gets away runners now at second third possibly one scoring so that was a huge save by Patterson three balls two strikes lengthy at bat so far for the catcher Britton Bond Puts it in play. Drifting back and not able to make the play at second. And that will was Brennan, and that's going to load the bases. Coach Waters thought about sending the runner right there, but he didn't want to make that out-at-home plate right there now when you got RBI chance. 
Aaron Harrington. And Harrington, a pretty good hitter coming up. So good call by him. He knows he needs more than a run, Trevor. So you got to play for a big inning. And we're going to see a pitching change here. It looks like Luke Hubbard's night on the bump is done. I believe it's Eric Mathai. We'll get that for you here in just a moment. 10-2, St. Albert leading Lewis Central. But the Titans with the bases juiced. Here in the bottom of the fifth on KMA 960. Has important news for you. If you're a high school senior trying to figure out what your next step in life will be after high school, consider this. Students learning trade specific skills will get you into the workplace quicker, making a good living and having a lot less college debt. Iowa Western offers one to two your programs in nursing, welding, industrial tech, and advanced manufacturing, plus many others. Great skills and great pay in less time. Talk to Iowa Western Community College in Clarinda and Shenandoah and start planning. Stewart, maybe experiencing some technical difficulties here. Trevor Matter, Brian Bertini. Trevor Matter, Brian Bertini. With you, it is ten. To With two. you, it is ten to two. Saint Albert leading Lewis Central. Saint Albert the leading Titans, Lewis Central. But Brian the Titans looks like a little bit of here in the bottom of the fifth. Oh, they did. They've got runners on. The bases loaded, one out. And this is that crucial part of the game for both squads. I think we're kind of that mid late innings now. You know, bottom of the fifth. Yeah, it's a ten two. They're facing eight run deficit, but. but they're the home team, Trevor, so they get last say if they can keep this close enough that you know they can come in and find a way to get a get a get a run. And you know, again, they're twelve and two. This is a very well yep. seasoned squad. They haven't panicked. They've got Luke Hubbard out now, probably due to pitches, and he just kinda got awesome some of the effectiveness and but they gotta go against the lefty right now. Yeah, Eric Maffi, the lefty pitching for Saint Albert. He's a Grandview commit. If you're just tuning in, it was 10 zip St. Albert through three. Lewis Central got two back in the fourth. They've worked a couple of clean innings defensively. They now loaded the bases here in the fifth. Aaron Harrington is at the plate. They've got Devin Naylor at third. Jonah Pomeranke at second. Britton Bond is at first. Big opportunity for the Titans here on this muggy night. Yeah, Council Bluffs. Titans really one hit away from getting right back in this game, Trevor. And one gone, Mathai. The lefty puts that one away. McGrath keeps it in front of him. We got the lefty lefty matchup here. Let's see who's got the advantage. But of course, there's nowhere to put him if he if you go ball right. four, right? Good news if you're St. Albert defensively, you're anything in play, you've got to play at the play. It's all misses upstairs, and wow. it's a 2 0 count. You're taking 2 0 here all the way because right. ball four is a walk and a run at the same time, and you keep this inning rolling. So. This is a take pitch here. 2-0 from Mathai to Harrington. He took, and it's a called strike. Makes it 2-1. Mathai knew that, too, and he knew he could just trust his mechanics right there, throw a strike, and get it back to a spot where he can he can work a little bit on the corners. Mathai kind of working quick. Puts that one outside. It's a called ball. 3-1 the count. Again, another take pitch here, Trevor. You, you got it. He's Mathai's got to basically throw two strikes in a row. So you take this one, and... Get ready for the 3-2. Mathai again will go quickly. 3-1. Popped up in left. Coming over and underneath it and making the snag is White. Runner will tag and scoring is Naylor. So they get one back. But there's two gone now in the fifth. And that's what Mathai wanted right there was an out. I'll get an out. I'll give you the run. I'll get I'll get the sack fly out. But nine, uh, what Mathai wants to do, Trevor, is prevent the big inning. What he didn't want to do is walk a run in. Continue with one yep. out, give up a you know an extra base hit, score two, possibly three. So that's huge. Get that out as you mentioned. Get to that all important second out. So Casey Clare, who started the night pitching, now playing third, comes that one's inside part of the zone called strike. Oh and one. Now the advantage of the count. Titans two outs. They're going the runners are going to be running. So a ball hit in the gap will play two. Stop ball right now, or at least 40 minutes ago, as that swung on a miss. LC had a 5 0 lead over St. Albert. That was in the fifth, and actually, they just went final moments ago with 6 4. Lewis Central getting the win in stop ball action. Runners go. One slow, runners go, taking third and second. Well, that takes the force off at any bag, so now infields have to go to one, and now with two outs. 
runners are going on yep. contact. Trevor, an error, you know, a, a single could split one, two runs. This is huge. 10-3. Mafai fires the pitch, swinging and missing for strike three is Casey Clare, and that's how the inning will end, but not before Lewis Central does get one back. We go to the six, 10-3, St. Albert here on KMA 9-16. cold remedies, and convenient items for you and your family. And when it comes time to have a prescription filled, you can always count on your Health Mart Family Pharmacy to do it right. Take your next prescription to Oakland Pharmacy in Oakland, a locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Well, we go to the six. Well, we go us on Cam A960 and video streaming online, CamALand.com. Trevor Mader, Brian Bertini here with you tonight. 10-3, St. Albert holding on to a lead. They've been kind of in a little bit of a dry spell uh, the last couple of innings, and they're going to go 4-5-6 with Brennan Monahan, Jackson Lennon, and Brett Klusman. Well, I think part of that's attributed to the good pitching of yeah. Trenton John yeah, he's, he's come in and done some things here well. Klusman lays down a leadoff bunt. John Ed has to come over, can't get a clean lead. Klusman's going to run it out. Yeah, and what are the three things that can happen on a ball Somebody's yep. got to field it, somebody's got to throw and it, and somebody's got to catch it, and Johnette couldn't field the clean, the good speed right there. That is the pretty much best spot you can now place a bunt, get a slow Jackson, roller Lennon. between the mound and third base, make him have to come off the hill and yeah. try to If the pitcher make a has to play. go, you know, four or five feet off the mound into the grass to get it, and he doesn't get it cleanly, he has no chance. Jackson Lennon now up to the dish for St. Albert. Johnette goes into his stance. Misses outside. So the St. Albert offense kind of in a hiatus the last couple. And yep. they'd love nothing more to kind of put another crooked number up here going to the six. Yeah, I mean, they get three and then get, you know, a clean inning. That would end this game at inning early. So a 1-0 count. Throw down the line. Ooh, they almost got him on the uh, throw to Harrington. Harrington. I think he might have been going on that pitch, Trevor. And Johnette was thinking the same thing. Good quick hands, but good snag and dig out of the dirt by uh, Aaron Harrington. Yeah, Klutzman just gets back safely. They do it again. That time it rolls to the fence and stealing is. Well, and that's Brett Klutzman right yeah. there causing that. Monahan, Monahan, yep. He he caused that because he he got off and caught off and you know forced that throw over by John Ed and that one just trickled away and Monahan didn't need much gap and he got up in advanced seconds. So just like that, runner at second, nobody out. So Brendan Monahan at second. The 1 0 to Jackson Lennon on the outside part of the zone. Called strike, makes it a 1 1. Lennon's thinking somewhere right side. A push, push a ball to the right side, get that runner to third so we can score a run. John Ed checks Monahan at second. Steps off the rubber, now steps back on. One ball, one strike to Jackson Lennon. Brett Klossman is the batter that awaits on deck. 1-1, one, one. Oh, chasing all the way was Lennon. That was outside, but it's a strike. Good breaking ball by John Ed. Snapped that off, and good tight rotation. And as you mentioned, Lennon could not hold back on that swing. So one ball, two strikes. In the top of the six. Check swing, gets away from Bond, and getting the third safely is Monahan. So a couple of errant throws. Well, that's the trouble when you runners. bite off a breaking ball, tre Trevor, in the dirt, and it kicks away. And with a runner on base, if it gets through the catcher, runners advance, and just like that, as you mentioned, a runner at third and nobody out. And St. Albert getting a little greedy here, but they'd love to push another run across. And I think they'd love to push a couple across. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That one misses outside. Bond gloves it. Actually, yeah, it is Bond still catching yeah, for John Lewis Central. A little overthrow that kind of. 
let the mechanics fall apart right there, overthrew that. And now a 3-2 count, pretty good hitter's count right here, Trevor. Get Monahan still at third. Hit on a line over the head of the second baseman, Pomerenke, and that's, or Fort rather, and that's going to score Monahan, oh, so an RBI single. Perfectly placed right there, just a little soft liner over second base. Second baseman is Mender Fort, just couldn't go up and get it and falls for a hit, and just like that, 11 3 and nobody out. And now Brett Klossman comes up. He's got a single to his name tonight. The defense will meet on the hill for Lewis Central. We'll see. Looks like maybe Trent and John Ed's night will come to a close, and we'll get a call to a bullpen. A new pitcher will warm up, and we'll step aside for a moment. 11 3 St. Albert here on Canada 960. We're going Canada 960. From large projects to daily tasks, we can help at Miller Building Supply in Shenandoah. This is Josh, and we pride ourselves on quality products, knowledge, and service. We're always available for advice on the projects that take years to design or the issues that need fixed in a hurry. And we offer free estimates on anything and everything you need to complete both. When you have a demand, we offer the supply. Miller Building Supply in Shenandoah. Nutrien Ag Solutions is your leading agricultural retailer of crop inputs and expert solutions. And they're your choice in the region for top-of-the-line products and customer service. When nothing short of the best is your standard, talk with Nutrien Ag Solutions in Westboro, Missouri, Coyne, Percival, and Essex, Iowa for fall application and products. Nutrien Ag Solutions, growing your crops and your bottom line. OSI is considered a premier global food provider by many of the world's leading brands. OSI delivers leading edge food solutions for product development as well as processing, and much of it is done from their Oakland, Iowa plant. Being a leader in the industry allows OSI Oakland to give back to the communities by sponsoring area high school events, offering special programs for veterans, and other community outreach programs. To learn more, visit osigroup.com and search for the Oakland, Iowa location. Welcome back to Council Welcome Bluffs back. here on Cam 960. Trevor Mater, Brian Bertini here with you tonight. We are in the top of the six. Nobody out. It's 11-3 St. Albert lead. Bryce Wilcox is now in to pitch for Lewis Central. Jackson Lennon got on with a single on Trenton Johnette. That was Johnette's final, final batter of the night. Well, this almost feels like Coach Waters really has this is it. it, it you know, we would let them get two runs. Or, you know, this game could end, and we got to stay as close as we possibly can. Here, we're just two at bats left, Trevor. Here's Brent Klossman, and you know, Wilcox kind of has a little, like like maybe a little bit of a sidearm. Yeah, I try to give him a little different look, a little different release point. One of the counts. That one is inside part of the zone, one and one. You got that long sweeping, it's kind of that sideways curveball, almost like yeah, a slider where it again, just breaks in. You know, kind of the arm mechanics are a little yep. out there in sideways. Is that kind of tough as a hitter to. Here's a 1 1. Klossman pops up, tried to show bunt, and they're going to say it hit him? No. That foul ball, so he offered at it, and then if it hits a piece of the bat, it's a foul ball. But, you know, it's just different. I mean, if you're not used to seeing it, it, you know, the ball's coming from a different angle. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, even though the lights are out, it, there's a little bit of a haze. So, you know, it's just you, you're tough picking up the spin. 1-2. Klossman gets a piece of it that time. It drops in center. Keeps the line moving. Lennon oh, to second. Klossman with another single. He saw it well enough to get a hit, didn't he, Trevor? Yeah, it worked, I'd say. Now batting number 20. And now up comes Carter White, Carter White to the plate White. for St. Albert. So these... It, when you're scoring that many runs, I mean, how, how great is it for a St. Albert lineup to know that mm -hmm. all your guys throughout the lineup can get hits, drive in runs? That's why you're putting up 60-some runs in four games. Carter White's got a hit to his name tonight. Scored a run as well. He's actually got two hits to his name tonight. Yeah, Carter White thinking what I was thinking too. Got nobody out. Moved those two runners over and let those guys, let Miller, McGrath in the top of the lineup try to get you that 13, 14 runs and hopefully let you men to Trevor end this inning early. 1-0, White shows bump, pulls back. They call strike. It's a 1-1. Wilcox knows that you, the best place to throw a pitch is up and away yep. if you're going to bunt so that you, you pop it up. Don't give him something he can get on, bat on top of. So a 1-1. 
From Wilcox, bunt popped up. That's always dangerous. It'll actually leave the field, though. Crazy hop. It hit the top of the, the post right there. Yeah, it went over the hit the top of the hit the top of the bar and just kind of skimmed off. One two, that hits White. Well, that and one he couldn't the get out of the way up. No. <laughs> so the base is full of runners now for St. Albert. Move Brett Klusman to second, Jackson Lennon to third. The only advantage there for for Lewis Central is Trevor, if it's hit on the corners or back to the pitcher, you can throw and prevent yeah. the run from scoring here. So but a strikeout right now is what Wilcox would love to get. Nobody out. 11-3 St. Alberts here in the top of the six. First pitch to Miller in there for a strike. 0-1 the count. And why, you know, people say, how, how do you become a good hitter? Good hitters hit good pitches. Yep. I don't care what level you're at. If you see guys up and down the lineup hitting, hitting good pitches. Miller sends that one into left. That is over the head. That'll drop. That wasn't far from being gone. It easily scores two. They will send White around. The throw at the plate is high. White slides underneath. It is a three-run ribby three run for double. Jeff yeah. Miller. He didn't miss the home run by much. Would have been a grand slam, but he hit it off the fence. And Coach Patterson was aggressive with the runners and sent him home. And just like that, 14 points up on the board, 14 runs, yeah. if you will. It's kind of looking like a football score, 14-3. to three. Well, again, Miller got a pitch right down the middle. He just took advantage of it, turned on it nicely, got the hands out in front, bat barrel through the zone, dropped it in the left center beautifully. Now Dan McGrath up to the plate. With Miller on McGrath, pops that one up. Coming over from first is Harrington. Doesn't lose it, and the lights gets underneath it, and there's one gone. And so this St. Albert offense coming in had 50 runs in four games. Well, they've done nothing to disappoint. Let's add 14 to that total. So 64 runs, Trevor. Pretty good. And that's going to win you a lot of games. Five games going to win you a lot of games. Well, you're not giving up many either. They've only given up five, six runs in those same games plus the three to nine. Back to top of the order. Colton Brennan, seventh batter of this inning for St. Albert. He sits on that one for a strike. And this is a six-game winning streak for the, for the Falcons, too, as they've got all the pieces right now back from their spring sports. And, Looking like a team that's got some ice set on Principal Park, right? Check swing. Did he go? He did, and it's an 0-2 count. We should, I'd imagine, get you know the district assignments at the very least. I would say probably sometime. Yeah, we're, we're getting next to the week. middle end of June here. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Next week, especially for the lower classes. You know, and you look around the area in Class 1A. That one misses outside. Cam Stout. You know, Woodbine's playing well. Tri Center. People forget they're actually 1A this year. They made the move down, or at least that's what the Iowa High School Athletic Association has them listed as, is 1A. But it's all going to go through St. Albert. It's, that's swung on a miss by Brennan. Yeah, and it's and a good matchup away. coming up next week. Trainer, Tri-Center Baseball. Yep. So we will be there for that one. It's got implications show. beyond that WIC conference yep. as well. There's seating and stuff like that for some of the baseball district. So two gone after Brennan struck out. And Isaac Sherrill will try to keep his sitting alive. Of course, he homered earlier. He sits on that one. It's a called strike. Now, Lewis Central is going to have to get at least two to keep this game alive into the seventh. And they're going to see tough, tough uh, Eric Mathai pitching, too. So Just getting a piece of it is Sherrill. They're going to see... Uh, Kale Mouskit, Luke Meyer, Peyton Ford in that inning. Anybody gets on, Devin Naylor would join the fun. That's why Isaac Sherrill would love nothing more than to pick up that RBI sitting out there right. in second, add that one more run. That gives you a little bit extra cushion, Trevor, to hold on and end this possibly in six innings. 14-3, to three, uh, St. Albert put on four in the first, three in the second, three in the third, none in the fourth or fifth, four here in this inning. Meanwhile, LC got their three with two in the fourth, one in the fifth. And the pitch to Cheryl. Six on it, one two count. Jeff Miller just moments ago had a three RBI double. Well, he didn't miss a grand slam by much. Hit the base of the fence out there in left center. Cheryl chasing at that one. It's a strikeout, and that's how this frame ends. 
will go to the bottom of six. Lewis Central will try to keep this game alive. They trail 14 to three here on Cam N916. Cam N916. At PCSB, we believe in helping our customers and our community grow. And service is how we do it. This is about making banking better. We are here to serve. We have an innovative spirit and a heart for people that moves us to do what's right. Because at the end of the day, we know what matters most. Visit us online at wearepcsb.com. PCSB, we believe in you. Member FDIC. Many businesses talk about service, but at Rogers Pharmacy, it's not just talk, setting them apart from the big box stores. They're a full-service pharmacy where you can not only fill prescriptions, but they also carry an impressive line of medical equipment to meet all of your needs. So whether you need oxygen, CPAP, BiPAP, lift chairs, or diabetic shoes, Rogers Pharmacy has them all. Let their family serve your family. The full-service, family-owned, independent Rogers Pharmacy, located in Tarkio, Mound City, Maryville, and St. Joe. Visit RogersRx.com. Welcome back to Council Bluffs here on KMA 960. We go to the bottom of the six. St. Albert has a chance to end this one. Brian Bertini, if they can hold Lewis Central to less than two runs, they lead 14 to three here in the bottom of the six. Well, and Eric Mathai's job right now is pretty simple, Trevor. Just throw strikes. Yep. Throw strikes, trust your defense, which is pretty outstanding. Your offense has done its job tonight. Throw strikes don't, and keep away from big innings. And I think the big thing of them, get the all-important first out here. And six, seven, eight coming up for Lewis Central in this one. Kale Mosket leading things up. And Eric Mathai pitching tonight's in relief effort for the Falcons. He's going to play collegiately at Grandview. Here's the 1 0. Is that one missed for a ball? Well, that, that tells you all you need part. to know when you hear one one. both squads and you hear guys you're talking yep. about seniors graduating going to play at the next level. There's that a, there's tells a lot you, of them. That tells you the level of uh, athletes around here in Council Bluffs. That's popped up underneath it from – no, it's going to drop. So uh, miscommunication. Mis yeah, it, the right fielder, the second baseman yeah, had a good Brennan, look at that. Brennan was there, I believe – was that Klusman coming over from right? And, and nobody, I, only anyone well, called it. Klusman called him, called it late. So Fire. Brennan peeled off. The second baseman right there. Um, yeah, Colton Brennan peeled off. Brennan actually had the play. I think if he would have just kept up and been vocal about it, kept it, got the out. But hey, you don't feel okay. as bad as your coach on competitor. Someone you're up 14-3. You can you can handle some of those. So LC gets the lead off on. Here's Luke Meyer. Mathai puts that one there. They call it a ball. A little high. Yeah, okay. But, again, for Lewis Central, you, you find a way to get the leadoff guy on, and you got to find a way, as you mentioned, Trevor, to scratch it. you got to scratch at least two runs here. Next one's in there for a strike. Makes it a one. It should be a one-on-one -on -one count. Those are things that those guys will talk about when they come in the dugout, you know, whether this game continues on or ends to uh, get that communication. On just outside, it's a 2-1 count. Because, you know, those situations will pop up. Yep. You know, you play outdoors and you play in – I with the wind blowing, those those little bloopers falling in the tweeners. You, you got to have the communication to get those outs. Two balls, one strike from Eric Mathai to Luke Meyer. That one is down away. oh three and one the count. Good patience right here by the hitter. Looks like Luke Meyer not giving in yeah. to hitting Mathai's pitch. Meyer tonight did have an RBI. Back in the fourth, Mathai will take the throw down the line to first. Moska gets back safely. Uh, and you got to remember that the left-handed pitcher can use the leg yep. to freeze you. As long as he doesn't break parallel, he can go first or home. So a 3-1 from Mathai to Meyer. Called strike. He needed that one to battle back. Again, sometimes you might be thinking about, I'll send the runner here instead of a double play, but since you need so many runs, Trevor, you can't really play for a run or two. You, no. You, you've got to play for at least... Three or four here. This game going on two hours. That one's inside. Meyer will take the walk, and it puts runners at first and second with Peyton Ford up to the plate. If you want to rally, you, you find ways to keep guys on. And it'll actually be a like number four. It will not be Fort coming in. It'll be Brady Hetzel to the plate. Big moment for Brady right here. See if he can continue this Titan rally. 14-3, nobody out. That one's a strike to Hetzel. 
So Mathai would love a ground ball somewhere. Hit hard, you know, they could turn two and really noodles down or get that get that all important pitcher's friend to strike out. Mathai launches the 0-1. Bunt show, but that was well outside, and it's a 1-1. The only reason you need to bunt down 14-3 is to extend the game. Yep. Put runners at second and third with one out, and then the single can, can get the game, and you can extend the game, get to that seventh inning. Because as you found out in some games, teams have scored five or six yep. runs in one frame. Here's the 1-1. Again, bunt laid down along the first baseline, coming over Patterson, covering from second was Brennan. And they get the out. Most well, runners, though. Patterson did the right thing. Looked at the runner to see where he was at third because he knew he had time. And if he had a play, he would take the lead run. Decided not to. Took the sure out. But now the bunt by right Hetzel dealer. does his job. Yep. He gets run two runners in scoring position. Now it's Devin Naylor's one for two tonight with a single. And a run scored coming up. 14-3. St. Albert leading Lewis Central in the bottom of the six. If St. Albert cannot put two runs on the board, this game would end. Mathai's first pitch is in there for a strike. Well, Mathai again wants to start with the first pitch strike. Does it right there. He's got to be careful of that breaking ball that's sharp in the dirt because the first base is open. Swing and third strike. The runner advance. The 0-1 in the dirt. Gets by the catcher, McGrath. Runner goes. The throw home is high. And that's going to send another runner across. And it's now a 10-run game as Mouskett and Meyer both score. Well, that's why you keep hustling. You keep playing, Trevor. Little things like that. It all started with a, a ball in between. A miscommunication puts the leadoff runner. Looks kind of innocent at the point, doesn't it? Yep. And, and then uh, a nice bunt moves him over. And look at the, look at Hesco's bunt. And then a little one little play a ball goes through the catcher's legs. The throw back to the pitcher unable. The second runner heads up. And suddenly we're going to play an extra game. Yeah, we're guaranteed to play seven now. 14-5. And we've still got... This one to Naylor, he sits on it for a strike. And those are things two. that Coach Patterson, that's the frustrating part when you have a time chance to close a team out and, and you just don't execute. Naylor sends that one over to left and it's fielded cleanly. And you go back to that little flare. Right. If that communication and Klusman comes in and calls out of us, or Brennan takes yep. it, this inning looks completely different, doesn't it, Trevor? Because you got you know one out and you're looking for two runs, and then Mathai's pitching different. Yep. He's pitching out of his windup. He's pitching the hitter different, and yeah, all it's it's the domino effect. Now it's back to the tap the order with Jonah Pomeranke. That one kind of broke into the last moment, but not enough, and now, it's a ball. And, and McGrath, you know, not used, you know. S hasn't seen Mathai in in this you know, lights a little different here and the ball's getting lost the tight rotation he's not picking it up it's clean 1-0 from Eric Mathai is in there for a strike 1-1 one one now to Jonah Pomeranke Mathai working quick Pomeranke just gets a piece of it that lands just to our left Levi was he protecting the camera or not? I hope so he didn't move. One ball, two strikes. We'll have to train him a little better, yeah. won't we? You give up yourself for the camera, yes. Levi. There's a one two <laughs> with two gone. Pomeranke just gets That's a That's what Derek up. would say, too, right? Absolutely. Protect the equipment. Huge thanks to Levi's son for helping us out with the video streams throughout the summer. We're going to have as many baseball and softball broadcasts as we can until the regular season ends. Here's the one, two, swing and a miss. And that's how the inning ends, but not before LC keeps this game alive with two runs. So we will play a seventh, ladies and gentlemen. 14 5, St. Albert here on KMA 960. At the end of six, St. Albert 14. When people ask me what my dad does, I still don't have exactly the right answer. This is Sadie, and my dad is Shane from Shop Ag. I know he takes calls and texts early in the morning and late at night. I know he does research to find the best products at the best prices. And I know he says, I'll get that done for you. But I guess I'm still not sure what all is involved in every aspect of agronomy. But I know my dad does it all. Call Shane at Shop Ag and see for yourself. 712-520-1333.
Welcome back to KMA 960. Find your place at Northwest Missouri State University. From day one, experience a university like no other. In the classroom, you'll find career-ready academic programs and hands-on learning, not to mention championship sports teams and clubs. Find your passion and your people. Plus, textbooks and a fully loaded laptop are included in your tuition with $19 million in scholarships and aid available. They also have a 97% placement rate. Visit nwmissouri.edu to apply today. Northwest Missouri State University, where Bearcats connect. Well, this game gets a seventh inning. We well, go this game to gets Patterson. a seventh Leaning inning. We go to St. Albert's. First pitch from Bryce Wilcox in there for a strike. It'll be Cy Patterson, Brendan Monahan, Jackson Lennon for St. Albert. And if you're the Falcons, you're just trying to add insurance. You do. And, you know, nine runs is a nice bulge, but it's also, there's also the potential when you allow a team, the home team, to come up that's got some firepower of their own. They'll see. You never feel comfortable until you get that all-important yep. last third out, Trevor. That one was tight and inside. It's a 1-1 count now to Patterson. He puts that one along left field line for another hit. So Cy Patterson, how about a four-hit night for him? Well, they batted about five or six times tonight. They it's rolled this fifth, lineup yep. over, so five, you get that many chances, Brendan you keep rolling. Monahan. So now Brendan Monahan comes up. He's got a couple hits to his name. Monahan was the quarterback on St. Albert's football team that made it to the state semifinals. Shows bunt, pulls back. If you're just tuning in, first of all, thank you. Second of all, it was 10 zip St. Albert after three. LC got it down to 10 3. After five, here's a bunt. Monahan pulls back. It's a called strike then. St. Albert put up four in the fifth or in the sixth. You thought maybe this game would see a premature end. Uh, but credit to Lewis Central. They keep battling. Get two to make it a nine-run game. Now they've got a steep hill to climb in the seventh. Here's the pitch from Wilcox. Bunt popped up by Monahan. Foul for strike two. Yeah, and Coach Duncan Patterson just trying to find a way, as you mentioned, add another insurance run. Add yep. One run, two runs, whatever it takes. Just keep the bulge as big as possible. Give yourself some cushion and go into that bottom of seventh. One and two the count. As Wilcox checks the runner, now rockets the one, two. Monahan chases, misses, and there's one gun on the strikeout from Bryce Wilcox. Wilcox got that little deceptive arm motion, as you now mentioned, Trevor. Kind of comes from the angle a little Jackson. bit like that. And he sweeps it across, a little, you know, little bit of a breaking ball that's kind of got a plane on that. And he's been pretty effective tonight. Jackson Lennon will come up to the plate. That one gets away. It'll move Patterson safely to second. He'll trot down the line. It's a 1-0 count on Mr. Lennon. Did you mention St. Albert back in action tomorrow night? Yep. They'll host Shenandoah up here in Council Bluffs. Lewis Central, 8 a.m. game Saturday morning against a Waukee team. Found out of play by Lennon. Yep, they've that got that going on. Get any easier because they turn out to play a really good heel yep. team at noon. And they get Clorinda Mon I mean, Monday yeah. nights in a double header. I know it's a dirty question. One ball, one strike, one gone. 14 5 St. Albert, top of the seventh. The pitch to Jackson Lennon just misses it. It's a strike for a 1 2 count. Again, Wilcox pulling the string on that. Just a little bit different speed on the breaking ball. And hitters still out in front a little bit. And you look at the Hawkeye 10 coming into tonight. Lewis Central, 8 ones. There's a swing and a miss strikeout from Lennon. The hot team right now is Glenwood. They put yep. they've won Kemper's like five or six in a row right now. And uh, Kurt Schultz squad figuring some things out, getting fielder. some better pitching. And yeah. you know, they had a couple nice wins over some pretty good squads. Beat uh, Swept Harlan. Yeah, Brett Klossman comes up. and Lewis Central, 8-1 and one in Hawkeye 10 is Klossman. Pulls back on that one. St. Albert 8 and 3, Denison Schleswig 8 and 3, Kemper 7 and 3, Atlantic and Glenwood 6 and 5, Clorinda 5 and 6, Harlan 4 and 6, Creston 3 and 8, Shan 2 and 8. Red Oak got their first win there night in a walk off over Shan as that's foul tip back by Klusman. So right now, Lewis Central in the driver's seat. This is their only meeting, uh, at least according to varsity bound, with St. Albert. They've still got Clorinda coming up, they've got Harlan, Denison. That's a sneaky game. A doubleheader with Creston. A doubleheader with Shenandoah. Atlantic and Glenwood on the docket. Here's the 1-1. Klusman again fouls it back and away. Well, again, in baseball, a little bit different softball. Pitch counts 
you know, have to enter into all your equations. You get late in the season, and you start thinking postseason. You want to have your your arms available, Trevor. You know, you, you got to protect, especially if you got multiple games, and you know, you, you really got to have a lot of thinking. It's outside for a ball. Casey Clear got the start tonight for Lewis Central. Uh, could only go two innings before he got ran off. Trenton Johnette came in, gave him a couple of really stout innings. And then Bryce Wilcox came into the sixth. So here's the 2-2. Got him looking. Plusman goes down to end the frame. Those were three straight strikeouts from Wilcox. And Lewis Central needs nine runs in the seventh here in Council Bluffs on KMA 960. Bluffs on KMA 960. Hi, it's Alexis with Sugar Makery. At Sugar Makery, we're all about making life sweeter in our treats, in our gift arrangements, and of course, in our customer service. We believe that life is made sweeter by giving back to the communities that give so much support to us, and that's why we're proud to be part of this programming. We hope you'll allow us to tempt your taste buds or help with your next customized gift arrangement very soon. Find us on Sharp Street in Glenwood and Conifer Lane in Council Bluffs and at SugarMakery.com. At the ARC Group, we take a disciplined approach to marketing. We understand that education and experience must be at the forefront of your decision-making process, and we also understand that all farms manage risk differently. This is Tim again with the ARC Group. I would like to meet with you, learn about your operation, understand your short and long-term goals, and then together we form a plan to maximize profitability on your farm. Call me at 712-370-3497 or visit us at agrisconsulting.net. Well, we go to the bottom of the seventh here in Council Bluffs. St. Albert leading Lewis Central 14-5 on KMA 960 and video streaming online, KMALand.com. Due up in this inning for LC, it's going to be J.C. Dermody, Britton Bond, and Aaron Harrington. And Brian Bertini, I think it goes without saying, uh, the Titans need a big rally here. Well, it starts with the first batter. Find a way to get him on, yep. go from there. You, you literally got to take one batter at a time. Eric Mathai pitching for the Falcons, and he hits the first batter. Well, that's a great start. One pitch, and suddenly you got a runner on. And I know you got a nine-run bowl, but that's a little frustrating for Coach Patterson because you don't want giveaways. You don't mind if they earn them by hits, but, you know, big innings start with little things, Trevor. And 14-5. to five. One's in there for a strike. And and if you're Mathai right now, you're just thinking, I, you're thinking middle of the play. I'm just going to throw a lot of pitches down the middle, and they're going to have to earn their way on. These two had met earlier this year. So that one is inside, and LC got the win 6-1. That was back on May 27th. That one's swinging and missing. It's Bond. Yeah, Mathai's really zoned in right now. He's looking for a strikeout right now. He... He knows he kind of let that first batter get away with that hit pitch inside one. And a little frustrated with himself right there. So refocus and lock down on the second hitter. Getting one ball, two strikes to Britton Bond. Nobody out, one on. And oh, it misses. didn't miss by much, did it? No, it did not. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. J.C. Dermody got on with the hit by pitch. Here's a pitch from Mathai. Drifting foul. Hit the, top of the, of hit the top of the fence. Patterson made a good run at it, but it was just kind of curling away. And a harmless foul ball. And it gets another opportunity right now for Bond at the plate. Well, waiting on deck is Aaron Harrington. Mathai launches the 2 2 in play. Coming over is Klusman from right. He is there. There is one gone. Good pitch by Mathai right there. Went up and in and jammed a little bit. Bond couldn't get now the barrel of the bat out 14, far enough to get enough on it. Aaron, Just a routine fly ball to right, right center. and All important first out. All St. Albert, Trevor sinking. Just two more, right? Yep, this was a state-ranked battle. 1A number 6, St. Albert. 4A number 9, Lewis Central. They hit him again. And there's a plunk on Aaron Harrington. Well, I think Mathias complaining that they're leaning over the plate and not trying to get out of the way. He, he thinks that the elbow's out over in the zone, and they have to make some effort to get out of the way. 
I think that's what he's kind of questioning the home plate umpire, but it, to no avail, and all it does is put another Titan on the base. Yep, and that'll bring Casey Clare up to the plate after Harrington was hit by a pitch. Both those hitters hit have been the left-handed hitters as they really crowded the plate against the left-handed pitcher. 14-5. Here in the seventh, there's a swinging strike to Clare. Five with a good off-speed pitch. Let's see. I'm, I'm thinking something up and in right here, Trevor. Come on. Got him. Strike three. This game down to its final out. Well, Mathai, again, frustrated with himself on the hit back and just wastes no time in three straight pitches. Trying to keep this game alive as Kale Mouse gets. St. Albert trying to hold on and get the win of engine earlier season loss to Lewis Central. That one inside. Runners at first and second, two out. So the St. Albert infield hit to the third, could just step on the bags. You got four and eight base. Find a way to get an out anywhere you can. That one's in there for a strike. One and one the count now on Mouse Skit. Or Mathai might just say, you know what, I'm going to yeah. take it myself. That's a good way to attack it. The 1 1. Mathai. Turn Trying around, to check the See runner if the runners second, might yeah. be going. It, you know, it, Coach Water might send him in motion to avoid, a double, you know, avoid an out at any bag. The 1 1. Outside for a ball. It's Moss guy's job now, Trevor, whatever it takes to find a way to continue the inning. Continue this at bat. Get on base. Continue with this opportunity. That one is low for a ball. 3 and 1 the count. This is what he's done. I think he's going to. I think he. Moss guy's thinking right now as a hitter, he's taking this pitch because the 3-2 count puts those runners in motion. One's in there for a strike, full count. Well, now Mathai has to deliver here again. Runners with two outs and a 3-2 count, they're going to be running on the pitch. So the payoff pitch could be the final pitch of the night from the lefty Eric Mathai to Kale Mouse get on its way. It's a called ball. We get another one. Base is loaded now for Lewis Central. I don't know where that man. That was a great pitch by Mathai right there. So that puts Dermody at third. Harrington at second. Luke Meyer, the DH, comes up. I think we had a meeting on the mound. Yeah, the coach is just going out to talk to him. Look, guys, hey, refocus. We just need an out. Got bases loaded. There's a force in any base. Get an out. Game's over. No, I think he's just kind of telling right now, don't let your emotions run. You know, you might have thought that was a strike or the stuff like that, but you, you got to have a quick short-term memory as a pitcher, Trevor, and just block it out or go back to refocus. And he's probably also telling him because the left-handed batters are going to do what, Trevor? The, the first two in this inning have crowded the plate and leaned yep. over, so I think he's going to tell him, hey, stay away from the inside corner, work away. Luke Meyer has an RBI to his hand that also scored a run. One's a ball, one out of the count. Meyer's probably going to stand up there and not even swing Trevor until he throws a strike. The next one is a strike, one and one the count. Yeah, that's a good job by Meyer. I mean, it forced Mathai to have to just pump strikes in there. So the 1-1, one, one, the final out of the night. Mathai gets that one in there for a strike. It's a 1-2 count. You can see he's working away. He's not even tempting fate by trying to throw on the no. inside half. So the one-two from Eric Mathai to Luke Meyer trying to end this one. Called strike three, and St. Albert wins it 14-5. to five. They scored 10 in the first three. They put up crooked numbers in the first, second, third, and sixth. Cy Patterson and Isaac Sherrill went deep, and the Falcons get their 15th win of the season. We will take a break, wrap things up here in a moment on KMA 960. Teach our children important life lessons like how to work together as a team and the importance of a great coach. TS Prosperity Group, a division of TS Bank, understands the importance of a successful team, especially when it comes to your finances. Let TS Prosperity Group be the coach of your financial team to help guide you to success with the goal of sleeping better, knowing your prosperity is protected for the next generation. Contact TSProsperityGroup.com to schedule your free 30 minute consultation today. Well, we have gone final tonight in Council Bluffs. This one is a 14-5 St. Albert winner. They scored 10 of the first three. A big night offensively for them, Brian Bertini. Yeah, they got it multiple different ways, didn't they, Trevor? They, they were aggressive at the plate. Uh, like I said, they had put up a lot of runs coming in. They didn't disappoint. They jumped out to leads. They had the two home runs in the second inning by Isaac Sherrill and Cy Patterson, but they kept getting hits, two out hits. 
kept getting balls to fall. They were aggressive on the bases, played good defense, and good pitching overall tonight, I think, from Luke Hubbard and yep. um, you know uh, Eric Mathai. And uh, this team is, is – Built for the postseason, but uh, let's lose Central team. Hey, they're 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 uh, they're going to be just yeah, fine. Give LC credit; they battled, man. It was ten nothing after three. They worked a couple of clean innings, got it down to to ten three. Then St. Albert got it back up to fourteen three in the sixth. And you know, they, LC doesn't get any runs there. Game's over. Yeah, and they're, they're able to get. And, they're and they, able to they get two more. On, on a pass ball to the catcher. Yep, uh, both runners score. That the, you, you don't quit. I mean, and that's what you like as a coach is saying, you know, everything you do now, you can take to the next game, to the next level, and. They found a way to get that done, and all of a sudden, you know, it just, it just that big lead by St. Albert, just kind of too big of a mountain to climb. But the great thing about June baseball, Trevor, is there's to, there's another yep. game coming up soon for both these teams. Absolutely. LC drops a 12-3 and three on the air. They get Waukee and Bishop Heelan come up as part of the Battle of Bluffs tournament Saturday morning. St. Albert now moves to 16-5. and five. They're now 9-3 and three in conference by LC, 8-2. and two. They get a battle with Shenandoah tomorrow night. Fun stuff here in Council Bluffs tonight. I have a full recap available online later on tonight, KMALI.com. We will see you Monday night, a pair of broadcasts for you. I'm in Anita for Coon Rapids Baron Cam Baseball. Austin McNorton will have Southwest Valley, Natalie Valley Softball on Monday night. We hope you join us. For those, until then, you've been listening to High School Baseball on KMA 960 Shandoah. Saying so long for KMA Sports. I'm Trevor Mater. Thanks for watching and have a great night.